Good morning, all. Uh, we will uh, open this meeting to, and uh, the, the proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. I ask the clerk to conduct the roll call, please. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Windover, are you present? I am here, yes. Councillor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. Councillor Lambshead? Present. And Mayor Clarkson is not present. For staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer. Present. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works. Present. Barb Waldron, Director of Building and Planning, CBO. Present. Adele Arbor, Planner. Present. Sarah Dillamarter, Junior Planner. Present. Uh, Ann Ruth, Deputy Clerk. Present. Bianca Dragisevic, Legislative Coordinator, Dr Executive Assistant to the CAO. Present. We also have Brian Zeman from MHBC, the Municipalities Planning Consultant. Present. And Michael Cullett from Tatham Engineering. I believe is on the line as well. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'll do the land acknowledgement and moment of reflection. We are respectfully acknowledging that Trent Lakes and Peterborough County are located on Treaty 20 Mississauga territory and in the traditional territory of Mississauga and Chippewa nations collectively known as the Williams Treaty, First Nations, which include Alderville, Beausoleil, Curve Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and Scugog Island First Nations. Trent Lakes respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty, First Nations, are the steward of caretaker of these lands and the water are opportunity and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We will now take a moment of reflection on these principles and our duty and responsibilities as member of council. Okay, thank you. Now the disclosure appearing in interest, anyone? Okay, say now or forever hold me later when it happens. Okay. So we get approval of the agenda. Gary. Second. Carol. Okay, okay. All in favor? Okay, Carrie. Thank you. This is a public meeting to the plan. Get them, uh, okay. Get a motion then. The intercessory public meeting percent to the planning act. Get a motion to suspend the regular meeting. Motion to suspend the regular okay, meeting and go um, to the public meeting. Second. Okay, Peter, thank you very much. All in favor? Okay, thank you. According to the Planning Act, the public meeting is the opportunity for the public to make representations in respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. We appreciate that there is a lot of interest in this application and request the public to be aware of the duplication and submission of comments being forward any new information. The public meeting is not intended to be a question and answer period, and is an opportunity for council, professionals, and the public to receive comments. There will not be a detailed answer give at this time. The recommendation report will be provided to council at a later date, which will address the comments received regarding the application. The program for today's meeting is as follows. The municipal planning at the elder will be opening up the meeting. Then 
Peter Jett, the MHBC planning consultant for the municipality, will introduce the file. This will be followed by a presentation by the applicant's planning consultant, Gord Russell. Speakers who previously registered with the clerk will be invited to speak afterwards. The raise of hand feature will be enabled for anyone else wishing to make an oral submission. We'll be, respect, we'll be respectfully ask all members of the public to keep their comments to 10 minutes wherever possible. After all the oral submissions and the applicant consultants will then have an opportunity to address any comments. Council will then have the opportunity to ask questions or get clarification from staff and applicants. At the end of the public meeting, there will be an opportunity for the applicant to consult in the municipal consultant and provide closing remarks. I'll now ask Adele to open the meeting. Thank you. Through you, Deputy Mayor Wendover, this is a public meeting under Section 34 of the Planning Act to consider an amendment to the Municipality Zoning <laughs> Bylaw B-2014-70 as amended. A notice of public meeting for the subject application containing the prescribed information was circulated in accordance to the Planning Act and Municipal Policy for Aggregate Related Planning Act applications. The notice was mailed to all landowners within a 500 meter radius of the subject lands, as well as staff mailed or emailed those who requested notification. And in addition, staff compiled a list of property owners from various emails and correspondence that we have received. The notice was also published in local newspapers, put on the municipal website and posted on the subject property. Notice was given at least 30 days in advance of this public meeting. The notice was also mailed to all prescribed agencies, public bodies, and persons in accordance with the regulations. Anyone wanting to be notified of any decision resulting from today's public meeting must send in a written request to myself or the clerk, and the notice of decision will be mailed to them, setting out the method and manner in which appeals may be made to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Please note that a, if, a pub, if a person does not send a written comment prior to the passing of a bylaw or make a written submission at the public meeting, that person may not be entitled to appeal the decision. The application before uh, council today and at the public meeting is for file number 20-14. The owner is Dudney Mountain Farms Limited and the address of the property is 4, 543 Ledge Road. I will now let Brian Zeman of MHBC, the Municipal Planning Consultant, he will introduce the file. Thank, thank you, Adele. And if I could just ask if my presentation could be brought up. Thank you. Uh, Good morning, Deputy Mayor Windover, members of council and the public. Uh, my name is Brian Zeman. I'm a land use planner and president of MHBC Planning. I was recently retained by the municipality to assist in processing and reviewing uh, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application. To date, I have authored uh, two reports to council. Uh, the first dated June 14th, which re recommended that we proceed to the public meeting, which is occurring today and then a second report, which was included in the agenda package today, dated August 2nd, 2022. Uh, this, this report includes information related to the purpose of the report to council, uh, background on the application, uh, the purpose of the public meeting today, uh, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment that was submitted by the, app by the applicant, a summary of the proposed road improvements uh, for the proposed hall route, a summary of public comments received, response to questions arising from questions of from council from the June 21st council meeting and a summary of the next steps. Uh, today I will provide an overview of the applicant application and then Mr. Gord Russell 
the planner on behalf of the applicant will also provide additional information. Uh, next slide, please. The location of the subject site is located at, as, um, as was mentioned, at 543 Ledge Road. Uh, the rezoning application was submitted for the purpose of establishing the haul route for the proposed quarry. A copy of the zoning bylaw amendment that was submitted by the applicant is included in Appendix C of my report. And this site is already designated in the official plan to permit aggregate extraction through official plan amendment 41. It is my understanding that Mr. Russell will provide more historical context of the proposed application. However, based on my review of the file to date, uh, the tr this, has, this application has been ongoing for some time and the tribunal has already made a determination that the proposed quarry is acceptable at the location of the subject site. However, the item to consider as part of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is the design of the proposed haul route to ensure that it can appropriately be accommodate truck traffic and that noise impact on adjacent sensitive receptors uh, will be minimized and designed to meet noise levels of 53 dBA or less at the adjacent receptors. Next slide, please. The zoning bylaw application was submitted to the municipality on July 20th, 2020. And on June 1st, 2021, the municipality deemed the application complete. Uh, since that time, and prior to myself being retained, the municipality did engage uh, Tatham Engineering to review the road improvement drawings, Air Acoustics to review the noise impacts on adjacent sensitive receptors, and Municipal Planning Services to review the uh, planning merits of the proposed zoning application. A copy of each of these reviews is included in my report, um, and it, as provided in Appendix A uh, to my report today. And today I will provide a summary of the municipal review that has occurred to date. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows a copy of the proposed haul route. Uh, so the subject site is shown in blue at the location of the proposed quarry site. And then highlighted in red is the area of the proposed haul route where improvements are proposed as, as uh, for the subject site. The access to the quarry is directly onto Ledge Road, and the proposed haul route is south on Ledge Road to Quarry Road. And then from Quarry Road, trucks would either travel east or west on County Road 36 uh, to their desired market, uh, market location. Uh, the current proposed road improvements are outlined in the drawings from Lakeview Engineering, updated April 29, 2022. And the, the um, app to meet the required noise limit, um, the quarry, instead of including mitigation measures within the right, municipal right-of-way, the quarry operator proposed to restrict the maximum amount of number of trucks to ensure that the noise levels as recommended by the tribunal could be adhered to, and that maximum level is 14 trucks per, trips per hour, uh, which represents approximately six trucks in and eight trucks out. Um, so it could be easily summarized as sort of seven trucks uh, with in and out could be going in and out of the subject site uh, in any given hour of the of the proposed quarry. Uh, next slide, please. The next four slides include a summary of the proposed road improvements along the haul route uh, to ensure the road is appropriately constructed to accommodate truck traffic. Uh, the first part of the improvements as summarized on this slide is the improvements of the intersection of County Road 36 and Quarry Road. These the improvements in this area include paving, an acceleration lane, deceleration lane, drainage improvements, new guardrails, and regrading on Quarry Road to reduce the steep slope entering County Road 36. As part of these improvements, the County of Peterborough has requested that the existing spring within the right of way at this intersection be removed. Uh, for liability issues related to public health and road safety, and I will speak to that a little further in my app and in my presentation. Next slide, please. The next section of improvements are proceeding north uh, from County Road 36 on Quarry Road uh, to the intersection of Ledge, Ledge Road. The improvements that are um, proposed for this section of road include realigning a section of the road to re remove a blind spot, adding a turning area for school buses and 
uh, paving this section of the road. Uh, next, next slide, please. The next section of the proposed improvements is from the Quarry Road intersection to approximately 130 uh, Ledge Road. Uh, this section of, imp of improvements include existing curves will be re regraded to reduce the steep grade onto Quarry Road. Other sections will be regraded and realigned to eliminate potential and existing blind spots. The road will be widened and mm -hmm. to seven meters and one meter shoulders on each side will be added. The mm -hmm. section of the road will be paved and Ledge Road will be designated as a stop road at Quarry Road through the use of a stop sign and a painted stop bar. Next slide, please. The last section is north of 130 Ledge Road to the uh, proposed quarry entrance exit. And this road will be realigned and widened to seven meters with one meter shoulders. It will be re-regraded to address blind spots and unnecessary curves and improve grade change and improper grade changes on the road. And this section will include a gravel base and it will not be paved. Next slide, please. As part of the application, a noise study was completed, which confirmed that by restricting the truck trips to a maximum of 14 trucks per hour, uh, that no further noise mitigation would be required uh, to meet the required um, decibels that were recommended by the tribunal. Uh, this report was peer reviewed by the municipality by Air Acoustics and confirmed to be acceptable from a noise perspective. Uh, despite this conclusion, the, the public has raised, as, as you will see in later comments from the public, uh, the public has raised concerns that not all sensitive, rep, uh, sensitive receptors were considered and there is no longer an agreement at 251 Ledge Road uh, regarding the, um, the structure that was on site there. Uh, both of these items will need to be confirmed by the municipality with the applicant as part of its ongoing review. Next slide, please. As I mentioned earlier, uh, road improvements were completed by the, by the applicant. Uh, these drawings were peer reviewed by the municipality. As a result of that review, updated drawings have been provided throughout the process. And this slide outlines a chronology of the uh, various drawings that were undertaken and provided to the municipality as part of the review. Uh, there was a very recent um, updated memorandum uh, that was provided on July 20th, 2022. It did not change the proposed design, but did provide, uh, just to, did provide um, a correction um, in the design brief related to a typo in terms of the amount of trucks. Um, the design brief had uh, iterated 20 trucks uh, per day, whereas the um, it's uh, uh, 20 trucks, uh, sorry, it should be, um, my apologies, I'm just gonna have to, uh, I'll have to just go back and correct that, but I believe it should be, um, I could have a typo here, but 14 trucks per hour. Uh, next slide, please. On May 3rd, 2022, the peer review uh, related to the uh, road improvement drawings confirmed that the pros proposed improvements are appropriate uh, to accommodate truck traffic. And they did provide two additional recommendations for the municipality to consider, which included uh, the completion of a geotechnical investi investigation. And also if the road improvements do proceed to adding a 10% contingency to the costs uh, to cover any unexpected uncertainties with the proposed road improvements. Next slide, please. Uh, the County of Peterborough has complete, um, is responsible for the intersection at County Road 36 and Quarry Road. Um, the County has reviewed the drawings and confirmed that they find them acceptable. Um, in light of some of the public comments that were received in relation to the removal of the spring within this right-of-way on July 27, 22, the, uh, the county did confirm to the municipality that they have requested that the applicant remove the spring as part of the proposed reconstruction drawings. Next slide, please. The proposed road improvements and restriction on the amount of trucks per hour would be subject to a legal agreement between the applicant municipality and county, which has been referred to as the Hall Route Agreement. Uh, the county has reviewed the Hall Route Agreement and the applicant has updated the draft agreement to address the county's comments. On July 21st, 2022, the applicant did provide an updated agreement to the municipality to address some of the comments related to consideration of an alternative haul route and the spring. 
Uh, it is my understanding that the municipality is uh, scheduling, ha has scheduled a meeting uh, with members of council to discuss the agreement and obtain instructions so comments can be provided to the applicant. Uh, just for reference, a copy of the current draft hall route agreement is a found in Appendix E of my report to council. Next slide, please. The next two slides deal with county's questions from the June 21st council meeting that related to the consideration of an alternative hall route and also for this, the spring. Uh, the first slide here does deal with the alternative hall route. Um, the discussion of an alternative hall route has been contemplated for some time. Um, the concept was to include a portion of the unopened road allowance uh, along the ledge road. Uh, so as seen on the, on the slide here, uh, the image, uh, the darker black line is the traveled portion of ledge road. And to the right of that, there is an unopened road allowance. Uh, so there was discussion about potentially using the unopened road allowance um, instead of using the traveled portion of ledge road for this portion of the haul route. Uh, the other improvements would still be applicable to the Quarry Road portion, the County Road 36 intersection, the ledge road, uh, but this would be a slight deviation to the road improvements that are currently uh, proposed. Um, it is my understanding that this was originally proposed by the application by the applicant in March of 2021 and then withdrew uh, the following month since the municipality could not confirm whether they would permit the use of the unopened road allowance. In light of the recent discussions uh, regarding the alternative um, route um, at the June 21st council meeting, the applicant did update the draft hall route agreement and this slide includes an excerpt from that draft agreement. In essence, what the draft hall route agreement that the applicant is proposing is to continue to upgrade ledge road as proposed in the road improvements and use that for the commencement of the operation and then subject to the ARA license being issued then the applicant would work with the municipality to determine if the unopened road allowance could be used in the future and this the investigation of this alternative haul route would need to be completed within two years of the aggregate license being issued and to secure um, the works, the applicant would provide the municipality a letter of credit in the amount of $250,000 to secure the cost to utilize that alternative haul route. Next slide, please. The second item that was council's questions regarding the status of the spring at the intersection of County Road 36 and Quarry Road. Um, this spring, uh, based on correspondence that I've received, this spring has been used by the local community for potable water and uh, particularly in times of power outages. And this spring is located within the lands owned by the county. Um, the county has confirmed that they have requested the applicant to remove the spring as part of the reconstruction of the intersection for both safety and liability reasons. Um, the applicant has provided a copy of the, the applicant was provided a copy of the public comments related to the application and uh, they understand the community's concerns related to the loss of this water supply. As a result, the applicant did update the draft haul route agreement with the township confirming that they are prepared to replace this water supply if requested by the township and would find an area within lands owned by the municipality to replace this water supply for the surrounding community. And the bottom of the slide includes the excerpt from the draft haul route agreement that was provided July 21st. Next slide, please. Appendix D of my report includes a copy of all the public comments that were received since the notice of the complete application was issued and uh, when, when comments were requested from the surrounding municipality. Since the completion of my report on August 2nd, additional comments have been received and it is my understanding that the clerk included these comments in the updated agenda package. I was also advised this morning by Ms. Arbor that since even the updated agenda package was provided to council, that there have been additional public comments received. And I understand that Ms. Arbor will read those into the public record before proceeding to the public portion of the public meeting today, so they're properly identified. Um, this application has generated significant public interest and the majority of the comments have been related to the community's desire to protect the spring 
as a source for drinking water, especially during a power outage. Uh, there were also comments from Curve Lake and First Nation regarding further, further consultation on the proposed application. And if I could just proceed to the next slide, I'll just, um, the next slide is a summary of the public comments that have been received uh, specifically related to the proposed haul route. Um, in addition to the comments on the spring, uh, the majority of the comments here that are summarized below are related to safety related to trucks on the proposed haul route, um, concerns related to noise and dust as a result of trucks um, being proposed on these haul routes, and then also concerns related to enforcements of the provisions uh, to restrict the amount of truck traffic on the proposed haul route. All of these comments, including the comments received today, will be considered by myself and other municipal staff conducting the review of the application, prior to preparing a final recommendation report to council. There were also, uh, just for the public and member, uh, council's uh, benefit, there were also comments that were specific to the proposed quarry sites. And I have not provided a summary of these comments as these comments will not form part of an overall review of the applic application since the tribunal has already previously considered the proposed quarry site and the operation and design of the quarry site and concluded that the quarry site is appropriate, subject to finalizing the details associated with the haul route. So the summary of public comments here are specific to those uh, concerns related to the establishment of the proposed haul route. Next slide, please. Uh, just a quick um, summary today. I, again, I would like to thank all the members of the public that have um, either provided comments to the municipality to date, as well as the members of the public that have joined us today. Uh, today's the purpose of today's meeting, as um, referenced by Deputy Mayor Windover, is to an opportunity to, for us to receive and listen to all the public comments. And the next steps following that would be a um, requirement for the professional team uh, to review all the public comments received and also have further discussions with the applicant regarding the draft haul route agreement, uh, the Curve Lake First Nation review. And then, as mentioned earlier, just confirming that all the uh, applicable sensitive receptors have been accounted for in consideration of the proposed haul route. And then there would be a staff recommendation report to council at a subsequent meeting uh, once these items have been concluded to um, for council to provide uh, consideration for a decision on the application. So I'd like to thank uh, members of council and members of the public for an opportunity to provide an overview of the application. And it is my understanding that next, Mr. Gord Russell, um, on behalf of the, the planner, on behalf of the applicant, will provide some additional details uh, specifically related to a little bit of the history of the proposed application. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, now, uh, so we'll have Gord Russell. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, members of Council, Municipal Senior Staff, and Minister Consultants, and members of the public. My name is Gord Russell. I am the applicant's land use planner. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our uh, team members. Uh, Mr. Paul Ritchie is the owner of Dooney Mountain Farms Limited. The, he is the applicant, and he's the, uh, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. And the proponent of the future quarry operation. Secondly, we have Mr. Bill Copeland. He is a professional engineer and, um, and he uh, owns Transland Associates. Um, that company produced the noise study traffic report. Mr. Hugh Williamson, also a professional engineer of Hugh Williamson and Associates. Uh, he completed the haul route noise assessment. Mr. Roy Halkema, uh, he is also a professional engineer of Lakeview Engineering, and Mr. Halkema uh, completed the road improvements report and drawings for the proposed road works. And uh, finally, we have Mr. David White. He is uh, our legal counsel and author of the draft Hall Road Agreement. That is our team members and we have a presentation. Um, the primary presentation consists of 47 slides. So I'm gonna take some time and just go through it. 
Uh, I don't mind being interrupted if Council uh, has questions on that particular slide, so by all means, ask away. Um, that said, uh, I estimate it will take between 45 minutes and an hour to go through. Um, I will try my best not to duplicate anything that Mr. Zeman has uh, already presented, and I thank Mr. Zeman for that uh, thorough review, uh, introductory review. Um, so what I'd like to do is just give a little bit of a brief history, uh, and then I'll go to the presentation. Um, many of the council members and many of the public uh, members of the public are aware that we have undertaken a thorough review for the last, I'm going to say, 12 years. Uh, and we have undertaken an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment that was originally submitted back in 2009 and 10 that was endorsed by this by council for this municipality uh, and the zoning bylaw was approved and the um, official plan was adopted by this council and then uh, directed to the county of Peterborough for approval. Uh, that official plan amendment number 41 was approved by the by the county. Uh, both the zoning bylaw amendment and the uh, official plan amendment were then subsequently appealed to the Ontario Municipal Board. We've had at least four uh, tribunal hearings, OMB, uh, which is the Ontario Municipal Board, the local planning and appeal tribunal, which was referred to as LPAT, and now we have the Ontario Land Tribunal, OLT. All three uh, tribunals uh, are one and the same. They've just changed their name over the last 12 years. Um, and we have also had uh, two uh, divisional court uh, uh, decisions. And what happened through that process of review was that the official plan amendment number 41 was in fact uh, uh, confirmed to be approved is an effect and that land use designation is aggregate resource extraction. So in your official plan now, the subject lands are designated for quarry use. The zoning bylaw, which implements the official plan policies, which implements the aggregate extraction resource designation, which basically says that a quarry uh, will be will be uh, permitted there sometime in the future. We are now submitting a new zoning bylaw amendment application to implement that land use designation in your official plan. The reason why we're coming back with a new official uh, new zoning bylaw amendment is not because the evidence and the land use planning criteria was rejected by the Ontario Municipal Board or the Tribunal. In fact, it was uh, it was approved, except that the haul route, that one singular issue, uh, could not be reasonably confirmed to ensure that the sensitive receptors, being the dwellings along the haul route, would be adequately protected. So we are down to, as the board concluded, one singular issue remained, that being the issue of noise resulting from the, from the haul route traffic. And the haul route traffic basically focuses in on the heavy trucks that will be, will be um, moving material from the site. So we have trucks coming in from County Road 36 along Quarry Road, to Ledge Road, to the north end of Ledge Road, to the actual site. Then they're coming back because it's only a one way in, one way out um, access road, and they will be fully loaded and they're coming back the same route. So uh, generally uh, there, there will be a maximum of 14 trucks per hour for a 10 hour day from 7 a.m. to approximately 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. and there will be a maximum of 148 trucks per day. Uh, there will be a few trucks early in the morning that are coming to the site just prior to seven o'clock in the morning and there will maybe a few uh, employee trucks leaving at the end to, uh, after the, the quarry uh, 
operation has closed down for the day. But basically, we're, what we're seeing is 14 trucks per hour, basically one truck per every four minutes of uh, time. So that is the um, perspective on that. We've got a, a land use designation already approved. We're implementing the zoning and bylaw. The evidence for the site has been approved. The, the tribunals uh, in direction, uh, based on the direction from the divisional court, asked that a new feasible haul route plan be proposed that the that the municipality could implement. And what we've done is come back with a no mitigation option for uh, our haul route, which basically means that there will not be any berms, there will not be fences, there will not be walls, there won't be additional tree plantings to offset high decibels. We are maintaining what was approved by the Ontario Municipal Board for this haul route at a, a decibel rate of 53 decibels or less. And um, that is the accepted evidence. And that is what the standard that we are uh, working toward. And you will see through this presentation that those reports that the professional engineers have completed all adhere to the one requirement by the board set at 53 decibels as being acceptable at the uh, as a noise level that's being produced by the trucks at the front doors of the dwellings uh, adjacent to the haul route. So in a nutshell, uh, we are now focused in on the one aspect of completing this proposal, which is confirming how the haul road should be improved based on a maximum uh, allowable truck movement of 14 trucks per hour and that those trucks are going to be uh, moving along the haul road between daylight hours being 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Our operation will likely be between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. and we are uh, maintaining a cap on those trucks of 14 trucks as a maximum per hour. And there will be less than that on most hours, but uh, that is the maximum no number that would be allowable adhering to the 53 decibels of noise set by the Ontario Municipal Board. So I'd like to start off with the next slide. And that slide, thank you very much, that slide uh, identifies one of the schedules in the town in Ms. Colley's official plan. So in the official plan, we have a number of maps and schedules. Some of them identify land use designations, others identify traffic corridors, uh, others identify uh, natural resources. Schedule C identifies the natural resource being the mineral aggregate resources within identified within the within the municipality. As you can see, there are two types of aggregate resources. The what I'm going to call the cottage red color is the sand and gravel deposit and the salmon color is the limestone bed rock. So those are the types of aggregate resources within the municipality. These have been identified because one of the policies within the provincial policy statement is that the natural resources of the province within every municipality be identified and that they be protected. And those natural resources are inclusive of aggregate resources. And what is uh, what we are uh, bound uh, to ensure is that those deposits are identified, the location are identified, and access to those locations, those deposits are provided. We have one hall, one route into the proposed deposit, and that is from County Road 36 to Quarry Road and Quarry Road to Ledge Road. Now, uh, one of the road names, Quarry Road, is indicative of what one of the uses on that road 
R in that row, that use would be an existing quarry. It's a smaller quarry. It's called Emerald Group Quarry and Quarry Road and that quarry are synonymous in the sense that um, they, that, that road identifies that there is a quarry on Quarry Road. What I'd like to do now is go to the specifics of the property and show how Schedule C shows up in relation to the subject lands. Next slide, slide please. So the circle on the left-hand side, which shows Schedule C, it's an excerpt of Schedule C, illustrates where the subject lands are in relation to the actual deposit, the limestone bedrock deposit. And as you can see in the middle slide, the subject lands are identified. They, are, they consist of all of Lot 28, part of Lot 29, and part of Lot 30, consisting of approximately 432 acres of land that uh, would represent um, the quarry site. And as you can see on the far side, the aerial photo side, the road network is, is illustrated and labeled on how to get to the quarry site or the subject lands. The, uh, the haul route again would be from Quarry, from County Road 36 onto Quarry Road, around the deviation portion of Ledge Road, and then to the north of Ledge Road to um, the subject lands. So we're, we, we are utilizing the direction from the province, identifying where the deposit is, identifying that this property is within that deposit, and that the the land use designation under section 41 is appropriately designated designating these lands for extract extractive resource um extractive resource and uh land use so it's all falling into place in terms of how the vision of the province the uh the county and the municipality have identified these lands as a deposit as a, an uh, extractive land use designation. And what we are dealing with is getting the zoning bylaw um, reviewed, considered, and decided upon as to the actual quarry use on these lands. Having said that, the Ontario Board has reiterated a number of times that mm -hmm. the evidence was accepted at the hearing for the quarry use on this property. It is the haul route that we now need to decide upon as to what is feasible and, re and representative in terms of in the public interest and reflective of ensuring that the residents along the haul route are protected from uh, a decibel uh, noise level of not more than 53 decibels. Next slide, please. So this is the best way we can illustrate what is on site. So the aerial photo shows the 432 acres of land. Part, part of the site has been previously forested and those wood product, products, the natural resource wood products have been removed and sold on the open market. The, um, the site, as you can see, does not consist of any buildings. Uh, there are a few driveways on the property. Um, there are more lo logging roads. Uh, but direct frontage on an open public road ha is reflective in this aerial photo on the on what I would call the west side of Ledge Road, and the main access is basically in the bottom uh, southeast corner of the property, and that would be where you see the driveway coming out to Ledge Road. That's approximately where the main sway scale and office building would be proposed, and you'll see that. Uh, located on the Aggregate Resources Act uh, site plans, which will be at the, la at the last few pl plans or slides that we have at the presentation. The middle photograph shows what the site looks like. And as you can see, rock outcrops of bedstone or limestone bedrock uh, is very close to the surface. And the last photograph on the right hand side is the dimensional rock that would be a second product of the quarry operation. So we would have the aggregate, which is the crushed rock, and that's good for um, road surfaces. 
and foundations and driveways and that type of thing. And then dimensional rock would be for landscaping purposes. Uh, next slide, please. So this is official plan amendment number 41. Uh, I wanted to just put that up um, as Mr. Zeman indicated, and I have confirmed that the, uh, the tribunal in its decision in 2018, although set aside the bylaw, identified that in the previous decisions from the OMB that the aggregate resource extraction land use designation for the subject lands is in effect. So although the decision in 2018 set aside the bylaw, the official plan amendment was confirmed in the original 2015 OMB decision, was yet again confirmed in the 2015 um, decision of December. So the first one was in February, the second one was in December. That official plan amendment is in effect. So this bylaw is implementing the vision for these lands for aggregate purposes. Please advance the slide. So the decision and order of the 2018s, there's been some misunderstanding of what the tribunal did. The tribunal confirmed that the evidence for the quarry use on the subject lands was sufficient and accepted that evidence for that use on the property. What it did was determine that there was insufficient evidence at that time in 2018 that would basically ensure that there was effective noise mitigation to the affected sensitive receptors on Ledge Road and Quarry Road. Basically meaning there wasn't sufficient evidence to adequately confirm that the proposed mitigation measures that were proposed uh, as um, for walls and berms would, would be appropriate along the Paul Road. Members set aside the bylaw and said, until we can work that out, the bylaw shouldn't be approved. But the land use evidence for the actual site would be, is considered sufficient and adequate and has been accepted and that the only issue that remained outstanding is for municipal council, this council, to determine how the hall road should be approved and the volume of trucks going along that hall road. Next slide, please. So the mandate of the panel of, of the tribunal regarding the 2018 decision was to focus strictly on the hall route noise mitigation issue. And the reason for that was that the court, the divisional court determined that there was an error of law. And the error of law was how the mitigation measures were going to be actually implemented in the field. The assumption was that there would be cooperation um, between the applicant who was the, being Dooney Mountain Farms the municipality and the owners of the lands adjacent to the hall road. And that was an error on Duty Mountain Farms understanding. And it was the, the proposal to create walls and berms utilizing lands outside of the road allowance was considered inappropriate and Therefore, that proposal for mitigation measures on the haul route was rejected. That said, the balance of the original decision is considered and to be treated as intact, meaning that the quarry use is appropriate for the subject lands. It's the haul route that we need to focus in on. Next slide, please. So, one of the main criteria that was accepted by the tribunal, the OMB decision, the original one uh, in 2015, was that the board found that a moderate to significant increase in the one hour equivalent sound level, that is to be 
between 15 decibels and just over 53 decibels at the front facades of the dwellings on balance is acceptable for this stretch of rural road, which sits in a well-identified limestone deposit. So again, the board is reminding us in its wording that this is a well-identified limestone deposit. The deposit must be protected and must be accessible. Next slide, please. So the board finds that the requested amendments of the OP and the bylaw conform to the general intent and purpose of both the municipality's OP and the county OP, uh, and that uh, it also is consistent with the provincial policy statement in accordance with good planning principles. That was the determination in the 2015 OMB decision and has been carried through right through to the 2018. Now, I want to bring this up. That was the finding in 2014. That was the evidence that was given. And um, the, the board hearing was in 2014. The municipal planner, uh, Mr. Peter Joseph and myself gave evidence based on the planning documents of the time. Mainly the 2014 provincial policy statement was in effect then. And you will see in the advanced um, slides that um, uh, council, based on the time period that has lapsed since 2014, correctly requested the applicant to identify certain documents that relied on the 2014 provincial policy statement to go back and up, update their their reports confirming with a statement that the new 2020 provincial policy statement new policies still maintain consistency uh, that this applicant this application can maintain consistency with the new policies of, of the 2020 provincial policy statement and uh, the next slide please And based on that, the proponent would be allowed to come back and develop a feasible noise mitigation plan that the municipality will agree to implement and which will satisfy the determined recommendations as to noise attenuation without creating consequential, consequential adverse impacts. So provided that the applicant could come back and create a feasible haul road um plan then there would be nothing that would be um adverse uh, contrary to bringing forward a new official a new zoning bylaw amendment application and would not require further review of the site itself because it was determined that a quarry use on that site was appropriate next slide please so again, we're dealing with lot 28, part of lot 29 and lot 30 concession 15 of Harvey. Just wanna make confirm that we're dealing with three fairly large parcels or lots within this one large parcel. And it is situated at the end of Ledge Road. Uh, next slide, please. So the zoning bylaw amendment deals with the subject land. So the schedule in your zoning bylaw map deals with those three parts, lots 28, 29, and 30. And the proposal is to rezone the subject lands, which are now special rural 55. The 55 is an exception to your rural zone. And that does not permit dwelling units on the property. What we are proposing is to rezone it. And this is the same bylaw that was presented to the um, OMB in terms of the, the land use zone. We're proposing it to go to a special extractive industrial holding zone. So the special part is a zone that would, that's outside, which is modified from the extractive industrial zone. And that is because we have removed a number of uses from the list of permitted uses 
within your general extractive industrial zone. The one use is a concrete batching plant that has been removed. The, so it's gonna be, so it's special in terms of a zone for, to your zoning bylaw. So we're identifying it as a special zone. It, we're identifying this extractive industrial because it's a core use that we're proposing. The holding zone is to ensure that the development agreement, which is the Hall Road agreement, is uh, in place before the use, the operation can continue, can, you, can be established and operate. So the holding provision is the safeguard of ensuring that the draft uh, Hall Road agreement is, is appropriate from both the county's perspective and from the uh, Ms. Pally's perspective is a tri-party agreement. Next slide, please. So what I just said was that we're proposing in a special extractive industrial zone with a holding provision, which basically means we that the use is approved but cannot be established until the agreement is completed and implemented and approved by council. Once that development agreement is executed, then the terms of the agreement would allow the construction, the improvements to the roads, the, uh, the intersection of County Road 36 and Quarry Road being the county's uh, area of authority, and then as we progress along Quarry Road North and up to the deviation portion of Ledge Road and then the straight portion of Ledge Road, that would be under the jurisdiction of the municipality. Next slide, please. So what we've tried to do is come back to council with an effective noise mitigation plan. So on the left-hand side is the Hall Road. That's the only road in and out of the site. And on the right-hand side is a, a, a map identifying the sensitive land uses, uh, sensitive land receptors of uh, along the Hall Road being primarily the dwellings um, situated along the Hall Road and where they're situated within the lots. We've identified all of those, and um, you will see through the um, slides that Mr. Williamson will review that we've identified the, them as uh, sensitive land receptors, that we're cognizant that the noise level produced from the heavy trucks along the Hall Road can, may not emanate, emit um, decibel level of more than 53 decibels at the front door of those dwellings. Next slide. So basically a decibel is a unit for measuring the degree of loudness of sound. The board approved a maximum allowance of 53 decibels and by keeping this to a no mitigation option hall road, we do, we no longer need to implement mitigation measures such as fences, berms, walls, and tree plantings. We are basically improving the road and our suggestion would be to lower the speed limit from 50 kilometers to 40 kilometers. And based on the fact that there is only one access in, that the improvements of the road at the cost of Duty Mountain Farms, the operating, uh, Quarry um, company uh, would improve the uh, the road the roads and the intersection and basically may and and maintain a truck traveling time period of between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. Next slide, please. So the supporting documentation that was presented as part of the of our application in 2020 was the noise study traffic report, the Hall Route noise impact assessment, and the quarry intersection, quarry road, and ledge road improvements. The planning justification that I provided, 
and the draft haul road agreement. Those are the main documents that support the remaining issue for council's consideration. Next one, please. So this is the resolution from council back in March uh, of 2021. Again, I referred to the provincial policy statement. Originally, it was uh, the, the 2014 provincial policy statement was used to give the evidence for the site and council um, uh, recommended that uh, certain reports be updated in, to reflect the policies of the 2020 provincial policy statement. And those statements came from the authors of the Hutter Geological Report, the Environmental Impact Study Report, the Blasting Impact Study Report, and the Archaeological Study Report. Those four statements came forward or were requested as part of ensuring that the application would be considered complete. The other two aspects of this resolution was that the Aggregate Resources Act site plans were provided as revised by the board to the municipality. And those revisions uh, primarily included hours of operation. And secondly, it was to do with, in the case of an event, an event being uh, a sighting of uh, a species at risk or a threatened species or an endangered species, species of amphibians, animals coming onto the site, how the operator would deal with the, the um, obtainment of that, of that um, animal or reptile, how they would um, uh, relocate it off site so that it would not be harmed. So they, the, the board member heard evidence that there may be some types of species that need to have special attention uh, should they wander onto the property. There were no sightings of at-risk uh, uh, species or endangered species or threatened species, but in the event that there should be one coming onto the site, then uh, there was to be uh, specific uh, instructions on how to deal with, with um, the, re the relocation of those uh, animals or reptiles. Uh, to ensure that they were uh, not harmed. The last requirement from uh, Council was that the Hall Road or Hall Route Agreement um, um, be provided to the municipality for review. So that was the resolution just prior to Council um, agreeing to that the application was complete. Second, next one, please. Next, advance the slide. So uh, based on that direction, the applicant obtained the statements from both the or from the Archaeological Research Associates Limited um, uh, company that provided the archaeological report. The uh, GHD, it's changed a couple times in, in the last 10 years in terms of name, but they did the original environmental report and uh, we got an updated statement from them. WSP did the hydrogeological review and ExpoTech did the dimensional and crushed uh, aggregate um, report. So we received the updates and provided them to the municipality confirming that they were consistent with the 2020 provincial policy statement. Additionally, we uh, obtained the um, uh, revised site plans uh, that were submitted to the Ontario Municipal Board and provided them to the municipality and they have all the requirements that uh, the board asked to have identified on the plans based on the evidence that was that the board heard in 2015. Technically 2014 the decision came out in 2015. And then uh, the Hall Road Agreement Mr. White provided that uh, on August 10th 2020 However, there have been a couple of updates, one being the revisions by the county because they reviewed it in 2021. And secondly, um, based on the public comments and um, council's um, desire to consider the unopened roll allowance, we've included two provisions, one with the alternate 
an alternative haul road um, option for that small portion of the unopened road allowance along Ledge Road. And secondly, the Artesian Well, which is on the county lands, which now needs to be removed uh, because of the improvements to the county road intersection of uh, 36 and Quarry Road. Uh, that provision for the Artesian Well, uh, yes, it's being removed. Uh, the public, uh, some members of the public have are desirous of retain, maintaining, retaining uh, an access to potable water and they would like to see the uh, water source uh, maintained and we have suggested a clause that would have a that would be reflective of that desire to continue with a water source in that area which is basically a clause saying that Dooney Mountain Farms will undertake the cost of drilling a new well on the municipal lands being the road allowance should council direct that as part of the agreement next letter or next slide please so uh, another resolution from council was that uh, they were to they would receive all those updates and that based on those updates now the application for the zoning amendment could be declared complete so a very thorough review by council to ensure that all the documentation was in place prior to formal consideration of the application. So that was that was uh, declared complete. Um, it, the application was declared complete, and now we are in. We we then proceeded to undertaking um, uh, a review uh, a review of those formal reports that form part of the supporting documentation for the application. Next slide, please. So that is what council did. Once they deemed it complete, they, they also wanted the, uh, those, the peer reviews of those technical reports and plans be undertaken and the uh, comments from those peer reviewers would then be provided for to municipal, or municipal council as well as um, municipal staff and available for the public to review. And the, the draft hall route would then be um, provided to the municipal solicitor and that, that the municipal solicitor would report back to council on the sections of the, of the um, agreement and provide advice as to the appropriateness of those uh, clauses within the agreement. And that was, uh, that was carried and we then proceeded with um, with those peer reviews. The next slide, please. So this deals with the noise study traffic report. This is Mr. Copeland's report. And I'm gonna hand off the presentation for this slide to Mr. Copeland. And he will go through the uh, items that he identified along the hall road and how the, um, uh, the, how the number of trucks that uh, would be appropriate for the hall road for accessing from Quarry, from Quarry County Road 36 to, to the site and then back to the county road. Mr. Copeland, may I ask you to uh, go over your slide, please? Bill, Bill Copeland. Oh, um, I'm a principal in Tram Plan Associates, and I carried out the traffic study uh, that provided the input data to the noise model. You have to forgive me. I my voice is a little harsh this morning from the allergy season that we're all currently enjoying. Um, <clears throat> the traffic study. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with the standard traffic impact study. It's important to note that the traffic study that I carried out for the noise model was somewhat different. Um, it was, uh, its scope was strictly defined by the volume data required as input to the noise model. And 
it didn't follow the pattern of the normal traffic impact study that council likely sees submitted for various projects that are in developments in, in the municipality. The, the uh, study was carried out in four steps. The first step was to identify the traffic components, which you see in this slide. Uh, there were four of them, uh, the hall route traffic uh, that accesses residents and hunt camps along Ledge Road, the hall route background traffic accessing residences along Quarry Road, and this would be uh, residents who live on the road, uh, people accessing their hunt camps and other recreational facilities that are, are presently using those two roads. The third component would be the new traffic that would be generated by the Dudney Mountain Quarry itself. And then finally, uh, traffic to the Emerald Group Quarry uh, was also considered. Uh, this quarry, as you probably know, is located just east of the Hall Road on Ties Mountain Road and uh, is uh, licensed as, I think, something in the order of uh, 20,000 tons a year extraction. Uh, once the uh, the uh, four traffic components were identified. Uh, and it's important to note as well that uh, these four components, none of them include through traffic because there effectively is no through traffic on the haul route. So all traffic on the haul route uh, will be comprised of the four components that are illustrated in the slide. The next step in the process was to break out the back, uh, the haul route components uh, by vehicle type, and they were broken into three specific vehicle types: uh, cars, pickups, uh, vans, uh, those SUVs. The second type were medium trucks. Uh, these would be vehicles that are that mostly will, in the future, provide services to the new uh, quarry. And they would include such things as the FedEx truck, uh, parts delivery vehicles, fuel supply vehicles. And we included a school bus as well uh, that I understand travels that route. Finally, the third vehicle type category are the heavy trucks that will be hauling the product from both quarries. The third step in the process was to develop uh, a 20, an hourly profile for each of the three vehicle types for the four components for a representative weekday for a 24 hour period. Um, these profiles were further separated into inbound and outbound traffic uh, because the noise model accounts for grades on the haul route. Final step in the process was to develop the actual, or was to produce the summaries that were required by the noise model itself. And uh, these summaries were, there were five of them. The first for the peak hour during the night, which in the case of uh, the quarry when it's active will be 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. The a.m. peak hour of traffic, which will be 7 to 8 a.m. The p.m. peak hour, uh, which will be uh, 4 to 5 p.m. and this includes all traffic, not just the quarry traffic. It also includes a summary for the 16 day hours from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and the eight nine hour eight pardon me eight night hours from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So in summary, uh, the volume data supplied to the noise model included uh, all the traffic. Uh, by vehicle type over a 24 hour period that will be traveling on the full haul route. Um, and that uh, was then provided to the noise consultant, uh, Hugh Williamson, to carry out the noise analysis. That's a good question. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. Um, I think what we'll do is go to the next slide uh, after the transplant and uh, specifically ask Mr. Williamson if he could speak to this slide dealing with the hall route noise impact assessment. Mr. Williamson.
Uh, thank you, Gord. Good mo morning, uh, councillors and staff. Um, please let me know if for some reason you can't hear me properly. I was having a little bit of internet problems earlier, um, but I'll continue. Uh, so my name is Hugh Williamson. I'm a, an acoustic consultant with many years of experience in uh, the analysis of noise from industrial uh, operations including things like quarries and hall routes. Um, so the <clears throat> task here was to assess how much uh, noise would be generated along the hall route. Uh, I, to do this, I needed uh, the numbers of trucks, uh, and not just the numbers of trucks, but the numbers of all the uh, traffic that would be along the hall route. And uh, in doing this, just back step one, one step, we followed procedures which are set out by the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, and the Ministry of Transportation. Uh, plus, of course, being guided by the uh, board decision uh, that the uh, hourly average sound level should not exceed 53 dBA at the receptors along the route. Uh, so the procedure was uh, as follows. We first of all have to identify uh, all of the receptors along the route, including how far away they are from the road and uh, what type of terrain separates them from the road. Uh, we also have to consider the speed which uh, vehicles are going along, along the road also, the grade of the road also needs to be considered. Uh, and then we also then look at the various traffic profiles provided by uh, Mr. Copeland uh, to determine which hours might be a worst case impact and, uh, and so on. So sound levels at the points of reception that the residences were calculated for the various cases and uh, the, the uh, in fact, the way we work was in, in, in the approach this time was to try and ensure that no mitigation was needed. That is, we didn't need berms or barriers. And so the numbers of uh, trucks was, uh, if you like, tailored to, uh, to ensure that that would be the case. Um, the study uh, was completed in 2020. Uh, the municipal had uh, the, the municipality uh, conducted a peer review. That's a process where the municipality selects an independent firm to review this study and consider whether it's been done appropriately. Uh, they selected um, a firm called Air Acoustics, which is one of Ontario's most prominent uh, acoustic consulting firms, and their conclusion was that the study had been conducted properly and that uh, noise should not be considered a reason for not uh, proceeding with the whole route. Um, I think I'll keep my presentation to that at the moment. Uh, I'm certainly very happy to answer any questions from the councillors uh, at the appropriate time. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you Mr. Williamson. The uh, Mr. Williamson is in Sydney, Australia. He's 14 hours ahead of time, so it's getting very late for him. So I greatly appreciate his uh, his willingness to uh, speak to to council on behalf of Dunedin Mountain Farms. So thank you very much, Mr. Williamson. Um, the next uh, slide uh, deals with the uh, third uh, engineering report uh, that dealt uh, uh, that report was conducted by Lakeview Engineering, Mr. Roy Helkema, and that was the ledge or Quarry Road, Ledge Road, and the intersection of, 20, of 36 uh, and Quarry Road road improvements. So this is a number of slides. I'm going to ask Mr. Helkema to address them. Uh, you have to uh, uh, understand that the drawings are very they are very large drawings so some of the detail does not come up on the slides but uh, the Miss Pally does have all of the drawings uh, uh, in the in the uh, planning office 
uh, which can be reviewed uh, at any time by the members of the public. And um, they've also been reviewed by both municipal staff as well as uh, Tatum Engineering, Mr. Uh, Michael uh, Cullop. Um, who has done an, a peer review of those uh, of the uh, traffic or sorry of the uh, road improvements report and uh, reviewed the drawings as well. So, Ms. Jalkova, I would ask you now to uh, uh, go through these slides. There's about 13 slides that uh, have been posted. We may not go through all of them, but uh, I'll leave it to Mr. Alkama to uh, um, to start his presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you and good morning. Can everyone hear me? Okay. I'm not in Australia. I'm just in Burley Falls, so I'm a lot closer. Anyways, uh, next slide, please, Gord. Next slide, please. There are, there are 18 drawings comprising the uh, engineering drawings. Um, when we did the design, which was done over a number of years, we had to a number of design premises. The first one was to make sure that two trucks could pass. Now, a normal municipal road is about seven meters of the travel portion, and we allow it for sh one meter shouldering and ditching beyond that. The other concern we had was to make sure that the road base could handle 14 trucks an hour and strengthen the existing road base. The, the third premise was to make sure that there's we didn't have any safety issues with blind spots. There's a number of curves and little hills and valleys. And even though the speed limit has been reduced to 40 clicks, we wanted to make sure that there was no safety issues. The other premise is that we had to make sure that we could accommodate pedestrian movements within the roadway, which with a nine meter road width, we should be able to accommodate. Okay. Good. Next slide, please. Now this is, I appreciate the scale is hard to see, but this is the 36 at the Quarry Road intersection. And the major improvements here was, if you, if you know the area, you know going to the west there's quite a grade. And uh, so we introduced an acceleration lane on the north side of 36, which would occupy the current shoulder. And at the same time, we had a deceleration lane on the east side of Quarry Road, which would also occupy the shoulder. And that's what the, the, the color shows. Also to allow truck movements, we've had to increase the radius or the th throat width within the intersection. So the radius has been increased to allow the movement of trucks in and out. The whole road then at the request of the town, the county is then going to be um, ground down and repaved for the full length that you see there. Um, and coincidentally, the next slide court, the next for about 90 meters further up, there's quite a hill going down onto 36, which if you to the left, so we've reduced that slope, which will require us to knock down the slope, provide some grades. That's the area by the laybine lanes with the mailboxes. They'll be maintained there. They may have to be temporarily moved while we do that work, but that's something we'll do with, with Canada Post. Coincident with this, and everyone is aware of this, the spring that is on the south, sorry, the um, northwest corner, uh, is being removed as part of this. It's being channeled through into the ditch system. And uh, we've been requested to do this by the county from a liability point of view and just for a matter of safety. First of all, with the increased radius, it's going to be occupied where the uh, spring is now. Second, the county is concerned that vehicles parking on the shoulder of 36 to get the water while there's trucks moving in and out it's not going to be a safe condition. The balance of Quarry Road, as you can see, is the next, uh, <clears throat> next slide, Gord. Okay, back one, sorry. 
the the, the Mount Sequoia Road is being uh, rebuilt by uh, pulverization, regrading, and then double surface treatment. Pulverization is a, you may have seen them, very large machines that actually take the road and grind it up, turn it back into a gravel, and then the grader will come and regrade the road to a proper cross section, make sure it's properly built, and then we will double surface treatment that section of the road. A little further up about midpoint and Quarry Road, there is a bit of a, an obstacle, there's a bit of a chicane, I call it, and that section of the road is being straightened out to take out a blind spot. All the way to the next slide, Lord. And this just describes in words what I've just said. Can you next draw on, Gord? That shows the area where we're going to realign Corey Road. Right now, there's a bit of a jog in it, and it's could, it is going to be a blind spot and a safety issue. We'll be taking that out. It's a large boulder and rock face in there that we'll have to take out. Next slide, please. This shows the intersection of Quarry Road with Ledge Road. What we're doing here is introducing a hammerhead uh, just at the end of existing Quarry Road where it is it meets with Tide Road, Tide Mountain Road. And this will allow school buses to turn around safely. Right now the school buses sort of turn down Tide Road and there's little safety concerns. School buses are technically not allowed to reverse, but in this case, there's not much option. So we're giving them a proper hammerhead, which has no traffic on it. The intersection there as well, from Ledge Road, we're introducing a stop sign. So now Ties Mountain Road, which has a yield, is going to be a through road right to Quarry Road. Ledge Road will be a stop road where it meets Quarry Road. That's a device of Chatham Engineering, and we thought it was a good good point. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This shows the curve going up the hill to where some of the residents are at uh, Ledge Road. This section of road, we're maintaining the existing road base, but regrading it, and then providing with double service treatment. We're also taking on a couple of little hills and valleys um, because of uh, sight line issues to straighten the road. Uh, there was some concerns expressed by some people about the impacts to their driveways. The driveways are being maintained and we will regrade the driveways, but the difference in grade between most driveways from what my survey says will be about three or four inches. So that's that could be easily accommodated working within the existing road allowance, not going to create a hardship to the existing residents in that sense. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is just a continuation and it shows where we're going to continue to regrade and provide double surface treatment. And from the balance from the last property to the quarry, we're, into, we're again regrading the road, putting in a seven meter wide carriageway, two meter shoulders, but that section will just be gravel beyond the, the last residence there. Next slide, please. And that's from that point on the continuation, about a hundred feet further to the east of this drawing is where the gravel will continue on toward the quarry. I think that's that should be it, Court. Thank you, Mr. Alkma. Uh, just one clarification: Could you just explain what a double surface treatment is? It is um, fine gravel graded out and then provided with an an oil base, an asphalt emulsion. And it's done twice, which is why it's called double surface treatment. And it's applied to a road base of about two inches thick. Of uh, It's pretty standard in uh, rural municipalities. A lot of the roads in the township are 
what we call tar and chip, which is double surface treatment. So there will be limited dust uh, occurring when the trucks go by based on that type of treatment. There will be no dust created by that, no. Thank you. Okay. Um, in terms of the next slide, uh, Anne, I and thank you very much, Anne, for helping us out uh, with the uh, the movement of the slides. Uh, I'm not taking credit for it. Uh, Ms. Pelly's uh, assistant is is uh, moving this presentation along for us. So, Anne, I, I would ask um, that we move to the Ms. Pelly's noise peer review air acoustics um, slide. Thank you very much. Um, basically. Uh, what uh, Mr. Uh, Zeman indicated in his introductory uh, presentation was that the um, uh, peer review was done by Air Acoustics uh, of uh, our noise impact assessment report and that the noise impact from this haul route with the mitigation strategy as outlined in the 2020 report which basically is the decibel allowance of 53 decibels and no more, 14 trucks and road improvements. Uh, this firm on behalf of the municipality found our report to be acceptable and that the proposed haul route should not be precluded due to the noise impact. So he is, the, the Air Acoustics is, is saying that our, our report is in line with what the um, uh, the uh, termless board directed in terms of the decibel with a maximum cap of uh, 14 trucks per hour and with the road improvements um, as presented by Mr. Alkama. Next slide, please. So uh, again, um, because uh, this proposal is circulated to the county, um, we re the, the municipality received comments with regards to the intersection uh, improvements and uh, the county has reviewed the drawings that Mr. Alkama has presented uh, and you will see on the next slide if I may that the uh, county has confirmed the road report and the associated drawings to be acceptable and um, again that also deals with the uh, removal of the artesian well and from their jurisdiction to accommodate the widening of Quarry Road as it comes onto County Road 36 to accommodate a larger uh, radius so that the trucks can turn appropriately into Quarry Road from the deceleration lane or uh, onto the acceleration lane of the county. And that is exactly where the uh, attrition well is, is in the location where the entrance or the intersection needs to be widened to accommodate trucks. Uh, we can't have the artesian well coming out of the surface of the roadway, so we have to cap it off and and uh, close it down for for uh, access and public safety. Uh, the road would actually ice up in the winter time if the well was to continue. That said, um, the public have advised uh, or provided with numerous comments about trying to preserve the well. Um, but what we can do is um, provide the option, should the municipality entertain the idea of us providing a new well in close proximity to the existing well, but on the municipal lands, on the municipal quarry road, road allowance. Uh, and I would suggest that a um, that it be associated with the postal box layby just to the north and uh, on Quarry Road on the east side of Quarry Road. Next slide, please. So, um, along with the peer reviews that the municipality asked to be done on their behalf, uh, Tatum Engineering uh, reviewed all the drawings and. Uh, undertook a very complete review. Uh, each uh, the, the report and the drawings, the 18 drawings, um, a lot of detail and uh, Mr. Kulop uh, and Mr. Halkama uh, spent many, many hours going back and forth uh, trying to make the improvements to 
uh, the intersection, the road uh, of Quarry and the, the turnaround at Ties Road and Quarry Road, uh, the, the, uh, the Hammerhead turnaround for the bus um, turning uh, allowances and then uh, the improvements to Ledge Road. They worked out uh, the, uh, the improvements to be much better than um, what they uh, uh, were and um, we now have an acceptable report and, uh, and plans that uh, meet the municipal requirements and uh, we'll see an improvement from a safety point of view as well as from a, a travel perspective on, on this roadway uh, based on when the improvements are done. And Mr. Culp's uh, uh, recommendation is conditional on that there be some geotechnical investigations uh, and uh, of the road base, basically what is supporting the road. Uh, it would be a matter of uh, digging down and confirming that the limestone bedrock is what's supporting the, the road. And if where it's not, um, that there'd be adequate uh, gravel um, uh, formed as a base to support the road. And then the second condition is that uh, in uh, um, in cognizant of the, the 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 scale of the cost of undertaking these road improvements, uh, it was believed that a ten percent contingency uh, allowance be uh, provided by the applicant to ensure that there was funds for things that were not expected based on the road improvements, such as an additional culvert that would have to be replaced based on the um, state of repair that the culvert would be in. So as an example of a contingency uh, allowance that was not originally anticipated to be a cost, but comes into play when uh, the road construction is being done at the time. So um, Mr. Culp, I understand, is online and uh, can speak to his recommendation, um, but that is what I understand to be his recommendation to uh, to the municipality, and it concurs with the final report and uh, design of the drawings that are, are being presented, both to the county as well as to the municipality for consideration. Uh, next slide, please. This slide speaks to the actual artesian spring. I wanted to indicate uh, that the circle is just identifying the label, and then you have to follow the arrow from the label up to the location of the spring, which is basically where the uh, stop bar, it will be uh, in the culvert area of the intersection of Quarry Road and County Road 36. So we know where it is. As you can see, it's going to be in the expanded uh, width of the intersection, and it has to be removed. Um, section 14 of the Hall Road Construction Agreement um, speaks to the uh, speaks to the applicant uh, committing to drill a new well if it's requested by the municipality. And the actual wording uh, can be discussed with Mr. White and Mr. Ewart, but um, that is the suggestion that this time of how we would deal with the, um, the artesian well. And it can be done, that can be decided before, during or after the uh, construction of the uh, road improvements. And perhaps it might be best that um, uh, it be included in the final design of that portion of Quarry Road in relation to how we're gonna deal with the lay-by for the, the postal boxes. And then perhaps if that's the right location, then uh, the uh, drill uh, drill the well uh, in proximity to that area where there, there's already a, a lay-by uh, side area for parking purposes. They're, par they're parking there to get their mail. They can also park there to get uh, water. So that's the suggestion uh, that how we accommodate the continuation of a water supply should the municipality think that there's merit in that option. And that would be in the agreement and uh, funds would be provided for that to confirm um, 
the uh, uh, relocation. Next slide, please. So the agreement itself, um, council, to my knowledge, has has yet to review it in detail. Uh, it was offered as a draft agreement by Mr. White, and we provided it to the county as well as to the municipality in July of 2021. The county did respond to uh, the draft agreement and asked for revisions to be undertaken. Uh, Mr. White did undertake those revisions and then provided a new uh, draft agreement uh, and then provided that back to the county as well as to Trent Lakes. And uh, your solicitor, Mr. Ewart, uh, I believe has a copy of it now and will be reviewing it with the senior staff as well as council in the near future. Next slide, please. Uh, the other uh, opportunity here is to include the alternative Hall Road option. Um, this dates back to 2014. There was confidential discussion at the Ontario Municipal Board about this provision. Um, it was at that time um, not uh, pursued um, basically because council had yet to give direction on that matter uh, and it was more uh, uh, conceptual than, than uh, our, our, our real alternative. So it sat uh, dormant for a number of years until it was further suggested that we uh, look at it again. And um, although it's not part of the submission before you today, um, based on the lower traffic uh, counts, we reduced the, the the number of heavy truck tra uh, passes going by the dwelling units from approximately 40 to 45 uh, trucks per hour down to 14, we no longer need uh, to um, undertake uh, very expensive mitigation measures such as the berms and the walls. So we have chosen to pursue the uh, improvements to the existing road. That said, um, once the license is been, has been issued for the municipal, uh, to, the, to the quarry and that rock can be removed from that quarry, it would be the appropriate time to uh, come back to this option to see if the municipality would like us to uh, review these, this road allowance and undertake what it would entail to improve the unopened road allowance lands to municipal standards for uh, vehicles, heavy truck vehicles. So we have kept, we have put it into the uh, Hall Road Agreement and we have confirmed that A, we will uh, provide, um, uh, we'll, once the license has been issued, we will come back to, uh, to this to review if the municipality wants us to do that and provide funds. Next, next one, please. So uh, the specifics of the uh, wording of the agreement is that uh, Duny uh, agrees to work with the municipality uh, on a collaborative review process for the unopened rural allowance improvements that uh, we do that upon the completion of phase one, which is basically phase one is all of the roadworks, uh, and that the um, design would be to the satisfaction of the municipality for road standards. That phase two, uh, being the review, would be completed within 24 months of the aggregate license being issued, and that is because we need the aggregate from the quarry to improve the road. And then, of course, uh, we would post uh, a letter of credit of $250,000 to accommodate the, uh, the improvements to the road allowance. And um, that is that wording can certainly be tweaked by your uh, solicitor and council as directed, but that is our first review of that condition, that uh, we keep the option in play 
and that, that it, but it'd be secondary to the main thrust of the road improvements, which is dealing with the open component of all of, all, of all two roads and the uh, intersection at quarry. So um, the, uh, the improvements uh, to this unopened road allowance will be secondary and will be in a, a two-year time frame um, once we've got the license from the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources to move rock, move aggregate from that site. That way it can be utilized on the unopened road allowance improvements. The next slide, please. So, the last two slides are basically uh, the Aggregate Resource Act site plans. These are the site plans that are submitted to the Ministry of Natural Resources. The, uh, these, this plan here basically shows A, the extraction and then the progressive rehabilitation plan. So first, uh, the property is divided into nine sections. Uh, where it is proposed to extract Section number one first, which is at the very west side of the of the property, well away from the road. Uh, the scales, which is section number seven, I believe, uh, will be done first as part of the uh, um, so the, the scales of the office, the, the maintenance building would be done at the uh, in section seven, which is basically the at the entrance of the quarry. What happens is over the years, section one would be uh, uh, excavated, the material would be taken out through section uh, three and then through section seven, which is the scale house, and then out to the public road. We then would go to section two, start rehabilitating section one. And then as section two is being excavated, section three would be prepared for excavation, which is basically clearing the trees from, from the surface and the, removing the topsoil, clearing it to the sides uh, for later rehabilitation purposes. We'd excavate section two, complete that section, and then we'd move on to section three. And by that time, section one would be fully rehabilitated. So that's the progressive rehabilitation plan and excavation plan, how the site is going to be undertaken. Uh, those plans were deemed appropriate by the Ontario Mills Board and have since been um, forwarded to the to the Natural, Ministry of Natural Resources as part of our application. And um, it's it, that license is pending your decision. The next plan, please. Next slide. Thank you, Anne. The, uh, this is the actual site itself. And as you can see, uh, the numbers of the sections are identified in the in the uh, in the area that is going to be excavated, and it shows the contours and what portion of the property is not being touched. So uh, the natural area to the west and north of the site are not going to be inclusive of the extraction area of the license, um, but the uh, the berming uh, is being proposed proposed to ensure that uh, the site noise and dust will be encapsulated well on site. Um, it will mitigate any noise emanating from the site to uh, lands adjacent to the south and to the east and, uh, in accordance to the 53 decibel allowance. And that those plans are just again confirming council's resolution that those plans be made available for both council, municipal staff and the public. And that is why it's part of the application and presentation to just to uh, uh, confirm that. So I believe that's the last slide. Thank you very much, Ann. Um, in summary, uh, we have official plan amendment number 41 uh, that was adopted by Trent Lakes and approved by the county and upheld by the Ontario Municipal Board. So that's in effect, it's aggregate resource extraction designation. Uh, one singular issue remains, that being the issue of noise resulting from the whole route traffic. We've completed our three engineering reports. Um, those reports have identified 
uh, that uh, the haul route proposed is the only haul route available and that uh, it is feasible to improve those, uh, those existing open roads to a standard to accommodate the heavy truck usage that would be derived from the aggregate uh, haulage that um, the board approved an eight decibel increase from the 45 decibel ambient noise level that is accepted as existing in the rural area now to a total of a 53 decibel allowance. The reconstruction of the roads from the intersection of County Road 36 along Quarry Road and Ledge Road to the Quarry site at the north end of Ledge Road uh, have been outlined in detail. Your peer reviewer, Mr. Uh, Mr. Culp of Tatum Eng Engineering has undertaken a thorough review and has concluded that those that report and those drawings meet the standard of the municipality and are adequate for uh, your consideration. The two-way hourly truck volume has been reduced from the previous 2018 review by the, tri by the, uh, the tribunal from 41 trucks to 14 trucks and that the decibel of 53 decibels during the daytime is the worst case scenario between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and a maximum of 48 decibels for the one hour which is considered nighttime hours from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and the reduction of the speed limit be permitted that's the request by the applicant so that the haul route is safer for everybody for any vehicle traveling along the haul road and that would be reduced from 50 kilometers down to 40 kilometers so we have air acoustics engineering uh, opinion saying that the approach for maintaining uh, the uh, allowed decibel level of 53 decibels that mitigation strategy is acceptable we have Tatum engineering confirming that the report and drawings are have been adequately adequately presented with two conditions attached to that uh, conclusion being geotechnical investigations of the road base, which we can do uh, once um, we have uh, uh, your endorsement, and then an allowance of 10% contingency on top of the cost estimates of doing the work. We have the County of Peterborough confirming that the site works on their road allowance is appropriate. And we have the Municipal Solicitor uh, Legal Services for the County having reviewed the, the content of the agreement, the draft agreement for the Hall Road, confirming that it is now acceptable. The agreement has incorporated uh, a relocation of the existing artesian well to accommodate the public uh, interests of, have, of maintaining a potable water source. We have the uh, uh, inclusion of a alternative haul road option utilizing the unopened road allowance should council deem it appropriate. And based on all of that, all the requirements that the municipality has asked for in this review, we have completed and have provided in accordance to both the provincial policy statement according to your official plan designation for OPA 41 being that it is the subject lands are designated aggregate resource extraction and that the Ontario Municipal Board, the tribunal, has accommodated the allowance of a resubmission of a zoning bylaw amendment to ensure that the Hall Road has been reviewed which is determined to be feasible in ensuring that the decibel level of the noise emanating from the trucks passing the dwellings 
does not exceed a 53 decibel limit. Based on that and the draft agreement, which your solicitor will provide direction on and you will provide direction to your solicitor to incorporate certain provisions into that agreement. We are asking that the zoning bylaw amendment before you be considered appropriate, is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the growth plan, conforms to the county's official plan, conforms to your municipality's official plan, is appropriate and is feasible. And we would ask the municipality to ask to direct your planning consultant to bring forth a planning review that speaks to the merits of this application and that your solicitor be, be asked to review the hall route in consultation with the council and then bring forth a zoning bylaw amendment that permits the use on the subject lands and provides for a, an agreement to improve the road. And that may, may come forward at the same time as the zoning bylaw, which would then negate the need for the uh, holding provision. But if it does not come forward at the same time, then the holding provision would be applicable. So it would be zoned in the, uh, extractive industrial exception with or without the holding, depending on the agreement coming forward at the same time. If it, based on that, we would ask that this council um, uh, consider this application for the merits that we've presented as appropriate and should see favor in this application being approved. So thank you very much for your, your understanding for through the review. Uh, we do have a secondary presentation for you. Should council ask questions specifically on the design of all 18 sheets of road work? So Mr. Alkema has that available. Should you wanna know specific details of the road construction being proposed along the intersection or at the intersection or along Quarry Road at the intersection of Ties Road and at, along Ledge Road. So thank you very much for your, your indulgence. Thank you so much. Uh, can I just have a couple of questions clarified for me here? Um, the decibel levels, are they accumulative to all traffic on the road? I'm going to ask Mr. Williamson to confirm that. We can't hear, we can't hear Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, we can't hear you. I, I, I apologize. I stepped away to get a glass of water and I missed your question, Councillor. Could you please repeat yes. it? The decibel levels that you calculate, are they accumulative of all traffic on the road? Yes, yes, they are. Okay. Now, thank you for that. Now, this is a kind of a three part question. So we now have two new homes going up or gone up on that road, and we no longer have an agreement with the one that's closest to the road. What are the contingencies for that? I mean, I don't know if they've been tested for sound or how close they are to the road, that sort of thing. You're talking about if somebody builds a new house on the road. Well, we we through through we we do have one new one being built, I believe, and one that's just been built on the road. Right. Uh, I'm I'm aware there was one new house built, and we did look at that, and it certainly um, met the noise criteria. Um, um, I w I would need to know where the location of the house is. Uh, if there's some new house that comes along just to uh, make sure that this was okay. But essentially, uh, an important factor here is, is a distance from the roadway. And uh, I think all the existing houses are of the order of 50 meters from the roadway. Yeah, thank you, except for the one that did have a deal with Duty Mountain Farms and no longer does now. It's quite close to the road. But That's correct. 
Okay, so, so that all being said, now when we're trying to calculate noise levels, have we anticipated the hundreds or thousands of snowmobiles, both um, four stroke and two stroke snowmobiles that use the side of that road every day during the winter time? Uh, no, th those were not taken into account. Uh, I guess one could say that, uh, you know, the possibility that they would increase the sound level. Uh, in the winter period, generally the production from the quarry would be very low, if there's any at all. Uh, yeah. So uh, probably very little truck traffic during that time. And also with, with ATVs, UTVs and motorcycles using that road in the summertime, I'm just wondering if that noise decibel has been captured. I, the the use by motorcycles certainly is their their vehicles uh, and uh, ATVs probably not because they're not uh, generally registered road vehicles. However, the noise levels from things like ATVs are are you know if they're meeting the regulations which they should. I know some people take mufflers off and things like this, but if they're uh, legally uh, registered vehicles and they have to meet the noise standards that other vehicles do. Okay, thank you. I would just go ahead. Oh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I have just a couple simple questions. Uh, is there a maximum size of the truck? I'll, I'll just uh, complete the question, you can answer. Um, is there a maximum size of the trucks that are going to be using this road? Are uh, pups or trailers uh, uh, for uh, hauling gravel uh, being used on this road? Um, is this Gore? Do you want to answer that? Um, I'm, I'm looking to Mr. Ritchie. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe Bill. Uh, could he had a uh, direct conversation with um, Mr. Ritchie with regards to the types of vehicles and what the classification of heavy trucks would be? So, would you like to uh, answer the, that question? Another question. You, know, you, you have to unmute yourself. No. Yeah. Okay, good to go. Um, uh, yes, as far as the uh, traffic's concerned, we didn't get into the specific geometrics, but we assumed the largest truck that would be hauling out of there. And I think in conversation with Paul the other day, he mentioned that could be, uh, some of them have a capacity up to 42 tones. Um, so, but as far as uh, truck traffic, we assumed, I believe, in the traffic analysis, 40, 40 tones in the trucks. Uh, that, the, that would define a, one of the larger vehicles. Whether there was a pup on it or not, I can't speak to that. I think that's some information that we would need to know. Because uh, instead of 14 trucks an hour, that's the equivalent of 28 trucks an hour. Well, I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. We can. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for the question. And we'll. Uh, if, we, if we could get a response in writing to the municipality. Yes, could I? Uh... Hugh Williamson here, if I could uh, just say something about this. The uh, traffic noise models, which the Ministry of Environment have created, uh, count numbers of heavy trucks. Now, whether these are 30 ton trucks, 40 ton trucks, or 42 ton trucks, uh, is already taken into account when they speak of the numbers of trucks. Do you have another question? Thank you. Thank you. And through you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, just one question. Uh, it may go to Roy, it may go to others. 
um, but one of the three design considerations was being able to accommodate pedestrians. And I, I don't know what that means. I understand that you included some additional shoulder width to accommodate pedestrians, but with as many as 14 trucks driving by an hour, what protections are there for pedestrians? Will there be a shoulder? Will there be some sort of uh, markers, uh, some sort of uh, I'm just not sure how it might accommodate them, but I'm not sure that it protects them. So I don't I don't know exactly what is entailed when you say accommodate pedestrians. So perhaps you can yeah. like what we're trying to clarify that is we're not proposing a sidewalk or a walking trail. The nine meter road width, uh, which is a little wider than you would see in a normal residential area, uh, allows for people to to walk and trucks safely to go around them. Uh, I didn't propose, no one has proposed any physical separation between them. It'd be, uh, I don't know how we would accommodate that other than to, if, if need be, we could widen one shoulder out and make that a walking shoulder. Thank you. <clears throat> Yes, we just have one more follow-up. Um, have further consultation with our First Nations people. Is that being planned? I think it was, but I, we just want to know what route that's taking. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, Curve Lake uh, has been contacted. Uh, they requested a payment of uh, for a commenting fee. Uh, they have uh, desired to uh, have a discussion with us after this presentation. I uh, I believe they wanted to either see the presentation or um, virtually or uh, uh, see or have the PowerPoint uh, advanced to them, both the municipal PowerPoint as well as the applicant's PowerPoint for review. And then they want to uh, set up a meeting and, and discuss uh, what the, um, the decisions of the board were and how the hall route would affect their uh, um, affect their position from uh, fr from their interests. So they've asked us to meet with them. Um, my suggestion would be that uh, it would be a, a meeting uh, with them as well as with municipal staff and ourselves so that we can uh, go over the merits of the application and see what uh, interests that they would have uh, and what comments they would provide to the municipality. Thank you for your answer. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Lord, I was wondering, though, the artesian well, how do you block that off? Uh, good question, and I'm not an engineer, so I'm going to refer that to Mr. Halkama. So uh, if I may, Deputy Mayor, may I uh, uh, ask Roy to uh, to speak to your to your question? Yeah, with the county, we decided we can't block it off. Uh, so what we're going to do is redirect it. Uh, so we've got a weeper going into the ground in that area, the weeper is going to go underneath the roadway and go into the east ditch. Yeah, right. It'll be, it'll, it's, it's probably going to be a, a six inch big old pipe. And that's in addition to the new culvert we're putting in as well. So it, it's not a case of plugging it, it's a case of redirecting it. Okay, that is more what was said though, was said was the, the plug. That would that did not come up, I don't think, in this debate about you were going to transfer, you know, redirect it. That did not come up. But what I'm wondering is, can you could it not maybe be be redirected across the road to the south, and then they could use it down that way? Well, as far as the county's concerned, they don't want people on the roadway at all. What I meant, well, it'd be on a township road though. I don't know if you can keep it on the township road. I don't know. I just okay. Well, it, it, it's it's just I'm thinking about the 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 gravity flow. The township road starts you know around where the mailboxes are a little yeah, bit far. Yeah. That that's the you're so you're going direct it to the east, which means it goes down to the 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 creek that's down there now. That flow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, further consideration of that, Deputy Mayor, uh, could be 
Uh, if the Miss Valley wishes to maintain it, uh, we could bring it across the road and bring it to the south part of uh, that road intersection. Um, so we'll put that uh, up for discussion as part of the uh, development agreement. Thanks. Okay. So now we'll proceed with the oral submissions. Excuse me, Ron. Oh, sorry. Could we have a 10 minute intermission? Yeah, could we have a 10 minute break? Uh, before we start with we'll the have a 10 minute session. break, maybe. Okay. Uh.
to there you go. Okay, no? yep. Welcome back, everyone. We'll now proceed with the oral submissions, and I'll ask the clerk to please invite the speakers who previously registered to make their submissions. Afterwards, with a raise of hand feature, we will be enabled to end for anyone else wishing to make an oral submission. I will remind members of the public to keep their comments to 10 minutes wherever possible. Thank you. Adele, did you want to speak first to address the comments that we've received in the meantime? Yes, thank you. Through you, Deputy Mayor Windover, given the length of time that it's taken for the presentations this morning, I would suggest we open the public participation component up of this public meeting. And I have six additional public comments that came in. Council has a copy of all these comments. However, if somebody should speak at the public component uh, portion, and I have a copy of their um, information here and their correspondence, I won't read it in, but whatever ones don't come forward, I will read at the end of the public component portion of the public meeting. Thank you. The first registered speaker I have is George and Jamie Leonard. I will unmute you now. Hello, how are you all today? Um, Deputy Mayor Windover, council members, staff, consultants, and municipality of Trent Lakes. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, I am speaking to you today to show opposition to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment B2014-070 from Dewey Mountain Farms Limited. My name is Jamie Leonard and I am here today to represent myself and my husband, George. As residents of Quarry Road, I am speaking to express our grave concerns, the proposed ledge in Quarry Road Hall Road application, and hope that you as elected officials representing our community will see that the negatives of this application outweighs the positives. There are many quarries located within the Trent Lakes area, but to my knowledge, none that have haul routes that go through a residential area, approximately five kilometers on a municipal road to reach a county road, which is a no exit. Approving our road as a haul road is very disturbing for the following reasons. As identified by the Ontario Municipal Board, now Ontario Land Tribunal, and previous council who denied an application on the same matter, noise associated with heavy tra traffic was a key concern and noise is still a key concern. Within their planning justification report, the proponent agreed, oh, argues that simply decreasing the amount of tra tra traffic will solve the problem. We are not convinced. The language used within the no mitigation noise study does nothing to alleviate our concerns, indicating that the maximum two-way hourly truck volume from uh, DMF quarry is assumed in this report to be 14 trucks, say six trucks in and eight trucks out in the busiest hour. The use of unclear terms such as assumed to be and say six trucks in and out trucks out, do not instill confidence that we can trust that 14 trucks will be the maximum in perpetuity. Additionally, the noise study does not contemplate noise associated with hewing of trucks waiting for the quarry to open. Regardless of the conclusions of the noise study, large trucks bring a significant amount of noise and to not recognize that is no, no uh, is ne oh I can't even get that word out. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it is neglected. Okay. Um, having worked in the trucking industry for forty for over forty years, I can confirm that the use of Jake brakes, which are extremely loud, is a common practice for fully loaded trucks, especially on downhill grades. This can be attributed partition partially to the cost associated with the use of regular brakes. Truck drivers will do whatever is necessary, including increasing speeds and using jake brakes to cut their running times to maximize their loads and profitability. An insert that accompanied a recent tax bill from the municipality of Trent Lakes warned, 
local residents that excessive noise disturbs your neighbors and carries over bodies of water. Noise likely to disturb your neighbors are radios, animals, motor vehicles, lawnmowers, watercrafts, construction, demolition repair, and lighting restrictions. And be a good neighbor and remember you can be charged at any time of the day in the event you are creating noise that is destructive to others. If this zoning bylaw amendment is approved, the hypocritical message to residents is that what is not okay for us is acceptable if there is a commercial interest involved. While noise is a primary concern, dust, emissions, and air pollution, and damage to personal vehicles from flying gravel are all possible if you approve this haul route. Additionally, there is the potential of foundation damage that would not be covered by our homeowner's insurance. When considering 148 heavy trucks, likely more bar barreling down our road daily, safety is also a key concern. It is unclear how the speed of these trucks will be regulated and then how they will share the road. I do a daily walk to retrieve my mail and often see others on the road. If this application is proved, approved, these activities will no longer be safe. And I also see drivers in trucks going down the road that aren't even having their eyes on the road. They're basically looking in their lap at either their iPhones or paperwork. Now, how am I going to be walking down the road safely when these guys are coming down the road and I've got to be the one that's got to get out of their way because they don't really notice me in time. So in addition to noise and safety, this application also highlights various environmental issues. There is a natural spring at the start of Quarry Road that provides a steady supply of water for all residents in the area. The risk that increased heavy truck traffic and the required road reconfigurations proposed to the spring should not be overlooked. Additionally, increased heavy truck traffic may require increased road salt applications, which can negatively impact aquifers and our drinking water supply. Lastly, the negative impact of heavy truck traffic on the wildlife that call our area home should not be discounted. If this application is approved, we will undoubtedly see more vehicle animal, animal collisions. If a ring were to be disabled on ledge road or quarry road, accident, weather conditions, or a mechanical failure, with this being a no exit, it leaves no other entrance for any emergency assistance for personal responders, fire, and rescue if there were to be an issue on the road for its residents. We purchased our home to retire in the tranquility and sense of community of Trent Lakes. We love to see the deer, moose, wild turkeys, and other wildlife that frequent the forest behind our home and continually walk up our driveway. We also love to see children riding their bikes, people pushing strollers and walking their dogs and just enjoying the outdoors. The thought of our road becoming a haul route and impacting wildlife, hydrological features, and residential enjoyment and safety, frankly, makes us sick with anxiety. It is the responsibility of elected officials to act in the public interest as exemplified by the numerous residents and members of the public that are speaking today and those who have sent in letters. This application is not in the public's best interest and should therefore be denied and never be able to brought before council again. Thank you for your time. I see. Thank you very much. Uh, next. Okay, next we have Joanna Gibson. I'll unmute you now. Uh, Joanna, if you're trying to speak, you're still self-muted there. I can see your mute's off. And are you able to hear me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good morning, council and fellow community members. My name is Joanna Gibson, and I'm representing the Gibson family of 39 Ledge Road. When I think of this area that we're lucky enough to call our home, I think of the words peace, wildlife, children, recreation, and community. When I think about the possibility of having trucks up and down this road, I can't fathom how any of those descriptions of our community could still exist. 
Anyone who would consider allowing this to be a quarry haul route must not have spent enough time here to see the drastic impact that this would have. Children walking to their buses without sidewalks, without street lights. We have deer, moose, bears, wild turkeys. The amount of deer that cross this road back and forth throughout the day, I shudder to think of how many would inevitably be killed by these trucks. I think about the number of people that I see gathered around the spring, accessing a beautiful natural resource that we are so fortunate to have in this community. I think about our family and so many others who chose this area to be their home so that they can enjoy a safe and quiet neighborhood. This hall route threatens everything that makes this community special. Please let's not be the town that said that this profit is more important than the safety of our children, more important than our wildlife, and more important than the feelings and of our community members. Please let's be the town that said we serve to protect what is most valuable to us. Please see the faces of our children, the hardworking community members, and the innocent wildlife that are inevitably impacted by your decision. Please see our faces and hear our voices, and we ask that you do your role to protect the community members. Thank you. I just ask you, when did you purchase your home? We purchased our home three years ago in July of 2018. We were told at the time that the quarry was no longer an issue, that it was something that was not going to be possible in this neighborhood. And when we selected this area, that was a main consideration for us, that that was not a possibility. So you can imagine how we have felt along with all of our other community members knowing that this is being brought up again. Thank you. I can understand, but who told you that was, the quarry was not going We were informed by our realtor who had spoken with community members and council that at that time there was no plans for the, the quarry to move forward. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Janet Klein. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Well, you've heard a lot of technical data. You won't get a lot of technical stuff from me, that's for sure. <laughs> I need I need to say first, just to note for the record, please, that legal counsel for Trent Lakes concerns citizens Eric Gillespie. He had a tribunal hearing at 11 o'clock, so could not speak today. The original agenda had no indication there was a presentation by the proponent, and unfortunately, it was longer than Mr. Russell estimated. So Mr. Gillespie will be sending a written summary for the record, if that's okay. So my letter, it won't be 10 minutes. Um, Deputy Mayor and Councillors, I'm here today just to support my friends and fellow residents of Trent Lakes in their opposition of the zoning bylaw amendment application. These folks, these friends of mine, live, work, and play in the quiet nature on Quarry and Ledge Road, and they are extremely scared of the proposed quarry application that will take this quiet nature away, and I don't blame them. I do not live on the potential truck haul route, as you know, like they do, but I can put myself in their difficult position. And I know those of you who live on a quiet municipal road can as well. I don't have to list all the reasons many of us moved up here, and I don't have to tell you the positive benefits of being outdoors in nature or living in a quiet area of Trent Lakes, because many of us experience that every day, and we moved here for those exact reasons. Our fellow residents will lose all of the healthy benefits of living where they do should you allow a truck haul route to roll past their doors. They will be condemned to try and live in an environment filled with dust and noise as haul trucks roll by every few minutes. Their physical health will suffer as well as their mental health. And I've already witnessed much anxiety from my friends living over there the past few years as they try desperately to preserve their way of life. Many of us who live on municipal roads walk alone or with our partners or with animal babies. I have seen children learning to ride bikes. I see school buses stopping to pick up children, and I see residents and tourists riding bikes or hiking up my road. And I know the same happens on Legend Quarry Roads. 
If I could not safely walk my daily five kilometers on my road with my spouse, will stop and visit with neighbors along the way, I would be devastated. The enjoyment of the road is a major part of my life up here and well-being, and I know it is for those living on Legend Quarry Road as well. I do not typically believe council decisions should be made on the basis that it will set a precedent. I believe that every decision should be made on its own merit or value to see if an exception applies. However, I see no value in allowing a truck haul route to rumble through residential neighborhoods on municipal roads now or ever in our beautiful municipality. Do you? Keep them on the main roads as they are now. By protecting your constituents and turning down this haul route on a municipal road once and for all, you will send a message to others that Tramp Lakes is not gonna allow truck haul routes where people live, work, and play. These are places for people to live their lives and communities to grow and flourish not haul trucks to travel, plain and simple. Every new business should have equal opportunity to start in Trent Lakes. I believe that. They are essential. They bring jobs and economic benefits. However, those benefits need to be weighed against their impact and should not be allowed to commence at the expense of other people's safety, lifestyles, and social well-being. The hypothetical benefits that may come with this development in no way justifies the very real impact to the numerous families who live on Legend Quarry Road. Why would a new business aiming to contribute to our community want this for its neighbors? Responsible industrial operators care about the communities that they operate in and aim to ensure their operations make the community a better place to live. And in my opinion, at every turn, this proponent has made it clear it is not their objective. I urge you to say no to the passing of this zoning bylaw amendment. You will be saying no to a truck haul route where children and adults play and folks have purchased and built their dream homes. Please remember the first three words on the Trent Lakes websites, which say live, work and play. None of these can happen on a dusty, noisy, unsafe haul route. By saying no, you will be protecting these folks and the entire community. And I thank you so much for listening to my comments and taking them into consideration. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I have Michael Pavin. Hello? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Hello, my name is Michael Pavin. I am a community member. I'm speaking today in opposition to the proposed changes. We can conduct all the studies we want to support our positions, but the only truth we know is quality of life will decrease. The truth is few will gain while many will lose. What is our goal as a community? One truck every four minutes? Some traffic beginning before 7 a.m.? Have pity on those who have called this area home. If this was your house, how would you vote? Thank you. Um, next, I have John Emiljano. I'll unmute you now. Yes, uh, good morning. Um, Fellow councillors and um, and staff and community members, um, my name is John Emiljano. I'm a principal with uh, Acoustics Canada Limited. It's an engineering firm specializing in, in noise and vibration, and uh, I've been retained by local residents off and on since um, 2013 to assist with their noise concerns regarding the the proposed quarry and and quarry hall route. Um, actually give evidence at the 2015 OMB hearing and participated at the 2018 LPAT, um, although I did not need to give evidence at, at the, uh, before that tribunal. Um, I've been asked to review the latest fall route um, noise report. And I've also, as part of that, reviewed the acoustics peer review that was done on behalf of the municipality. So. I do have a written report as well that will be submitted and this presentation is a bit of a summary of, of that. 
not getting into all of the, the nitty details of that report. Um, go to the next slide, please. So obviously we're all familiar with the with the proposed haul route. Um, the big concern being the portion from County Road 36 to the site itself, utilizing both Quarry Road and um, Left Road. Um, next slide, please. So this is a bit of a unique situation in that there is the OMB decision from 2014, or sorry, 2015, that provides the approved assessment mitigation requirements for the Hall Root Noise Impact Study. Um, so really, we're bound by what's in the decision, and we're relying less on the guideline requirements and the guideline limits um, at this at this stage. And really, the objective is to comply with what's written in the decision itself. Next slide, please. So. This is a table from um, the latest Hall Root Noise Study prepared by Hugh Williamson Associates Incorporated. And in my opinion, the results are not in compliance with what the OMB decision requires. And we'll get into a number of items related to that. This is table two. There's other tables present other results for different hours of, of the day. There's another daytime table and there's an, a, a nighttime table as well. This is the table two presents the highest um, sound levels, which accounts for the 14 truck movements per hour. I think for most of the other hours of the daytime period, um, the anticipated truck volume is 12 instead of 14. So the, the, the decrease is relatively small. And from a noise impact perspective, the difference between 14 and 12 trucks per hour is, is, is really insignificant in the order of, of less than a decibel of difference. Um, next slide, please. So as I said, the OMB decision provides guidance on the permitted noise impacts at the receptor. So let's, let's dig into a little bit more detail as to what the OMB decision actually says. So next slide. So clause 47 from the decision, and if we go to the next slide, it highlights the relevant section. So it says that the glossary of terms and descriptors in the MOE guidelines states that increases above the ambient noise level of between two and five decibels are detectable, but are unlikely to cause discomfort. This would apply to seven of the receptors. On the evidence of Dr. Williamson, the board finds that the projected noise increase at these seven receptors is acceptable. So what's, what's important here? There's lots to dig into here. Um, one of the things that the Hall Root study fails to present is, is what are the actual impacts or what are the changes or is what the decision refers to, what are the actual increases above the ambient noise levels? And it's not essentially written in stone that 53 dBA is the guideline limit and applies everywhere at all of the receptors. In fact, um, I don't think the decision says that. And the decision really focuses on what are the changes, the changes being what increases are going to result from the current situation to the future situation as a result of the truck traffic being added to the haul route. So really, it's the increases that are, are significant and is, and is highlighted here in the, in the board decision. And the number receptors that are actually impacted at different levels. So in this case, it says that detectable impacts of between two and five decibels are acceptable at seven receptor locations. Now, we should recognize that the original Hallward study considered 18 receptor locations. Um, there have been two dwellings constructed since then, so the current study actually looks at, at 20 receptor locations. So Again, originally we're looking at 18. The board found that we could have detectable impacts at seven of the receptor locations. Next slide, please. And let's skip ahead to the next slide after this with the highlights again. So clause 51 provides a little bit more detail in terms of impacts as well. And the board finds that a moderate to significant increase in the one hour equivalent sound level, that is to between 50 and just over 53 dBA at the front facades, at three of the receptors is on balance acceptable for this stretch of rural road 
which sits on a well-defined limestone deposit. So again, you know, this doesn't necessarily talk about um, the increase or the or the you know, what what that is, but we're talking we're dealing with samples of 50 to 53, where the change, which is again based on an assumed ambient of 45 of five to eight decibels, is resulting in that moderate to significant noise impact or increase in the background sound level. And again, the board is is clear here that this level of increased noise impact sort of beyond the two to five detectable range is acceptable at three of the receptors on balance. And it's not a broad stroke acceptance that this is acceptable at all of the receptor locations as has been applied by the, by the latest noise study. So if we skip ahead to the next slide. In summary, in terms of my interpretation of, of what the OMB decision is requiring, it requires the noise impact to be limited to detectable projected noise increases, two to five decibels at up to seven receptors, and moderate to significant projected noise increases, six to eight decibels at up to three receptor locations. Um, so next slide. So going back and looking at table two and showing what the resulting one hour sound levels are, I've highlighted where the sound levels would round to 51 dBA or higher. So again, it's using the assumed 45 dBA ambient. Um, these highlighted ones are the receptors that would be in the six to eight decibel impact range in the moderate to significant range. And you'll see the bottom of this table is cut off, but there are seven receptors that are highlighted. And none of these receptors are the new receptors. So these are all receptors that existed at the time of the 2015 OMB hearing. Now, one of these is HR3, where very significant impacts are highlighted. Um, and these are beyond the the eight decibels of impact that were um, approved by the by the OMB um, in, the, in their decision. And this has been highlighted in the latest report that some sort of accommodation needs to be done for HR3. But at this point, we have no idea what that accommodation will be or what that looks like. So again, in summary here, in terms of the, the noise impacts, we are getting be moderate to significant impacts at more than double the number of receptors that the board said would be acceptable or deemed to be acceptable. Next slide, please. So in terms of noise impact, noise impact is really defined as the projected sound level increase, the difference between what residents would currently experience versus what they're expected to experience in the future once the the vehicle start using the haul route. And again, clause 45 from the OMB decision says that, and as Dr. Williamson suggested here, it says that the, the noise guidelines for landfill sites provides good information that can be used for assessing haul routes. And, and the reason for this is that the noise guidelines for landfill sites is the only MOE noise guideline document that actually deals with haul routes specifically. So that document and those guidelines and those parameters are often used for quarry hull root noise assessments as well. He also points out that the Ministry of the Transportation Guide for Noise, uh, which is used for provincial highway noise impact assessments, also provides um, useful information in terms of, of the assessments. So we'll have a look at that as well. So um, next slide. So from the town's peer review, which was done by Air Acoustics, um, they did a review of the sound, sound level limits, and they agreed that the impact of a route is generally not assessed against a fixed sound limit, but as an increase in the sound level at the receptors along the hall route. So again, it's the impact of change that's most important, not necessarily compliance with a absolute sound level. Next slide, please. So in terms of, of what the landfill guideline says, this table actually comes from the landfill guideline and it deals with offsite source vehicles. So the trucks, once they leave the site and when they're actually using the haul route. So the table itself, you know, talks about the sound level increases and the qualitative ratings. 
very similar to what the board indicated that you know impacts of one to three because there's always going to be an increase but if the residents are, are far enough away the increase you know if it's only one to three decibels it's it's really insignificant three to five is that first level that that those seven receptors that were permitted to have that three to five increase um, this table deems those as being noticeable. I think the board decision deemed those as being detectable. And then the five to 10 range is um, where it becomes significant. Again, the board said five to eight, not five to 10. And they deal, deem these as being moderate to significant, not just purely significant. So again, the, the board's terminology comes directly from guidance provided within the landfill guideline. So next slide, please. So part of the issue here is that no one really knows what the actual ambient sound level in the area is. And to really be able to determine what the impacts are, we really need to do, have an accurate reference. Now, in terms of the noise study, it's been completed with respect to guidance provided from MTO's Environmental Guide for Noise. Again, these two bullets come directly from the latest um, Hall Root Study Report, noise, noise Study Report. And basically, it, it again confirms that the 45 dBA that's been used as the daytime ambient sound level has been assumed based on guidance provided by the MTO and their Environmental Guide for Noise. Further to that, um, the latest noise study also goes on to make an additional assumption in regards to the ambient that occurs during the nighttime period, um, the hour between 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. where trucks would begin arriving at the site. And they have basically made a compound assumption that the nighttime ambient will be 5 dB lower than the daytime ambient. And again, we're assuming the daytime ambient is 45. So we're assuming 45 during the daytime, so we're assuming the nighttime ambient is 40 and the impacts have been assessed based on these assumed ambience. Next slide, please. So if we look at the 2006 version of the MTO Environmental Guide for Noise, um, next slide, it does say that you know where there is no dominant noise source currently exists or projected to exist in the future for a class three area such as this. Um, in doing a highway assessment, you are to assume that the ambient is 45 dBA with the caveat that MTO and MOE confirm the assumed ambient sound level. So that is sort of the basis for the 45 ambient that's assumed during the daytime period. Um, MTO, this guideline does not provide the, the similar support for using a 40 dBA guideline limit during the, or sorry, an ambient during the nighttime period. Um, sort of the rationale for that is simply the, dis the difference between the stationary source guideline limits for daytime and nighttime periods and um, the MOE documents, and particularly NPC 306. So if we look at the next slide, the Environmental Guide for Noise was actually updated in 2022. And if we go to the next slide, we look at it, the wording's the same, but the assumed ambient sound levels have been decreased by five across, across the board for class one, class two, and class three rural areas. This being a class three rural area, um, there's no question with respect to that. The quarry noise impact assessment itself assumed all the receptors were class three. So if if you know the current best practice would be to use a 40 dB ambient instead of a 40 45 dB ambient, and again the same the same caveat exists. MTO and, and the ministry must confirm that the, the confirm the assumed future no build sound level. So it's not sort of a again a broad brushstroke that yeah we can use this in all situations. Some sort of approval is needed to use this. So. You know, the, the, there is question here about the ambient, definitely. And, you know, the interesting thing is that nobody's actually gone out there to, to do any sort of measurements or any, anybody from the proponents team anyways, 
hasn't gone out to do any sort of ambient monitoring to determine, well, what is the proper baseline to ensure that the impacts that are deemed to be acceptable by the board um, are not going to be exceeded in the future. Next slide, please. So my final concern with respect to the um, noise report itself is the assessment location itself and what's referred to as point of reception. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, from the latest uh, noise study, the point of reception that's been used in the study is three meters from the dwelling, closer to the road from the most expo exposed part of the dwelling at 1.5 meters above grade. And this is the definition in NPC 300, the ministry sort of general noise guideline for an outdoor living area at a proposed residential development. And not necessarily the location that's typically used for assessment of stationary noise sources at existing residential developments. So if you go on to the next slide, Again, we're looking at the table out of the landfill guideline. We looked at the same table earlier. But what it says is it says the noise impact of the offsite vehicle should be assessed in terms of one hour sound level at the points of reception and the results provided. <laughs> so, you know, the guideline well, offsite or the whole route section of the guideline specifically says that we need to look at points of reception. And if we go to the next slide, the landfill guideline does provide a definition of what a point of reception actually is. And it means the point, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. So it's, it means any point on the premises of a person <clears throat> 30 meters of a dwelling or a camping area where sound are originating, where sound or vibration originating from other than those premises are received. For the purpose of noise impact assessment of a proposed landfill operation or an expansion to existing landfill operation, the point of reception may be located at any of the following existing or zone four future use premises, permanent or seasonal residences, hotels, motels, nursing retirement homes, rental residences, hospitals, campgrounds, and noise sensitive buildings such as schools and places of worship. Now I know there's you know, been some continual discussion of whether or not hunt camps, hunt camps should be considered sensitive receptors and points of reception. You know, certainly in my opinion, and I think this actually shows up in the board decision that um, Dr. Williamson agreed with me that a hunt camp, even though it's not a permanent residence, you know, could be deemed similar to a seasonal residence and or, you know, a campground or something along those lines, and certainly would fit fall under the um, definition of a point of reception in the sensitive land use. So on to the next slide. So what's so important about the assessment location and the, and the point of reception? Well, a typical hall route, um, you know, most of the hall routes that I've been involved, been involved with, been involved with has a certain level of, of background traffic and as a result of that background traffic, that traffic creates some noise, some ambient noise, and that effectively sets a threshold. And so that noise is, is being produced and that noise gets reduced as you get further and further away from the roadway itself. Now, when you add haul route traffic to that type of a situation, effectively all you're doing is increasing the volume of the source itself but all of the remaining factors remain the same. So in other words, the volume increase represents the impact. That impact is gonna be continuous regardless of how far or how close, close you are to that roadway. So in that type of situation, what's important is that the ambient varies with the distance from the roadway. With respect to the ledge road haul route, there's essentially no background traffic. It's a dead end road. And what what's different here is that the ambient is effectively the same regardless of the distance you are from the hall route itself. There's no traffic there, so there's nothing generating the background noise that gets diminished as you move away from the roadway. 
So as a result of that, the noise impact actually changes with setback from the hollow root itself. So in terms of looking at point of reception and establishing predictable worst case impacts, as is required by the guidelines, the impacts can be greatest at the point of receptions that are closest to the hall root, not at a location right up against the dwelling itself. And you know, as as from the previous slide, you know, the point of reception can be as much as 30 meters closer to the hall root itself than was considered in the assessment. And the impact is going to be greater at those locations where you are closer to the hall root, just because the noise generated by the hall root is going to be higher. When you are closer to the hall route. Next slide, please. So, in conclusion, you know, my opinion certainly is that the no mitigation hall route noise assessment has not been prepared in accordance with what the OMB decision have found and required. Um, the moderate to significant noise impacts um, occur or predicted to occur at significantly more than three receptors that the board decision deemed to be acceptable. Um, using the assumed ambient as the reference against which noise impacts are assumed or measured um, is, is basically approximate. And, you know, looking at current best practices in terms of, you know, what the MTO is recommending, you know, they have revised their standards as well in terms of, well, what, what minimum ambient should be used in this type of a setting. And finally, the analysis is, is not considered to be predictable worst case due to the analysis location that was used um, in the noise study itself. The assessment only looks at one particular location up close to the dwelling facade. It does not consider that entire envelope of, of reception area that the guideline envisions. And um, Thank you. That that basically concludes my my presentation. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, can I make one final comment here? Because I, I know Air Acoustics did did make draw the conclusion that the sound levels are basically in compliance with the guidelines. The one thing the Air Acoustics peer review did not conclude is that the findings are in compliance with the OMB decision. It's basically silent on that on that point, and doesn't say that they are or they are not in compliance with what the what the board ordered. Set the last one. Uh, next, we have Dan Duke. Um, yes. Good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dan Duke from Duke Engineering. I was um, part of the original, I guess, OMB hearing back in 2008, I believe. And I was asked to look at the, um, the Lakeview drawings. Um, now the drawings I was provided with, they're, they're not the current set. Um, they were dated. Uh, these are sealed May 1st, 2020. So I understand there's been quite a bit of work done on these drawings since these original set were prepared. But, um, but we did look at, at quite a few um, items on those drawings, and I assume probably for the Tatham review probably probably dealt with a lot of the uh, the problems that were with those original drawings. The biggest thing that that we were looking at is there's a part of Ledge Road that is a forced road. In other words, it's not built on the original road allowance. So technically, the uh, area that the road, because it's a forced road, uh, the right of way is the area the road occupies as opposed to a 66 foot right of way. So we looked at um, several locations um, where there were some vertical improvements. In other words, they were going to either raise the road or lower the road. And they were mentioned earlier today where they were going to do some um, site line improvements. If you draw a cross section on that road in conformance with the sections provided in these earlier um, 2020 drawings, the ditches um, and some of the top of cut, bottom of cut extend well past uh, what is the current area occupied by the road. So since this is a forced road, um, in order to do this work, the municipality would have to widen the right of way, which would mean property would be required. 
So I don't know if that's ever been identified in the Tatham review or any, or if the township has been provided with cross sections, they've plotted all the way through this project or not. But it would appear that in some areas, um, these road improvements would require a, a, um, a right of way even wider than a current 66 feet. So, um, so I don't know if that's been mentioned or if anybody's drawn that up to date, um, or even if they've gone so far as to provide detailed cross sections for the proposed road work, or it's just been limited currently to just plan and profile work. But, um, but in the areas that they're talking, these significant cuts, um, by the time you go down, put your granules in, do a proper ditch and grade that back up at two to one, you're gonna, you're gonna be requiring more footprint than 66 feet. Now I did send some drawings out yesterday. Um, I'm not sure if if they got in to be shared or not. Um, whoever's moderating, I did provide four cross sections at, at three areas where the um, these vertical improvements were proposed, and uh, and we showed that the top of cut and bottom of fill would be outside of the 66 foot right away. So not sure how that worked into the, the current set of drawings, but um, I worked for MTO for 10 years and I know we, whenever we did roads and did road improvements, we were, we had an internal property section. We kept them pretty busy, you know, getting land for tow slopes and top of cuts. And, and sometimes it wound up in expropriation, but that's a, that's a long process if the property owners aren't willing to give you the property. And that certainly doesn't seem to be the case in this, uh, in this project anyway. But I, I, I am surprised that they haven't done a geotechnical investigation because that should have been something done right at the beginning of this project. Typically you find out what the roadbed is um, and that tells you how much uh, excavation you're gonna have to do, how much fill you're gonna have to do to improve the roadworks. Um, I know my MTO days, the first thing we did was a geotechnical investigation. It wouldn't, we wouldn't go and design the road and then come back and say, uh, we need a geotechnical investigation to tell us how we're actually going to build what we're proposing. It seems, it seems a little um, um, like you know the, these are old roads that are you're really upgrading from a, just a road to get from a few houses to a quarry road. So there's going to be a significant increase in the the loading and the the type of road you're designing here. So those old roads are are you know basically they knock the trees down and put some gravel over the stumps and and that was good enough, but but not if you're not if you're going to improve it as a haul road, that's for sure. Um, anyway, but I, I just know that it's going to be tough to fit it on that right away with the proposed work they're they're doing here. So I'm not sure if anybody did look at the at the actual final cross sections of this roadway, but um, but it's just my experience having you know done roads for 30 years, we often get into property issues when we start trying to, you know, do some deep cuts on a on a 66 foot right away. Anyway, that's that's my points. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. next is Ed Leardon. Since we're unable to hear Ed, I can come back to him later if he can resolve his technical issues. Um, next, I have uh, Linda Pham.
appears we're also having issues hearing Linda. I'll move to the next one is David Petrangelo. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yep. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, and so, dear uh, Deputy Mayor and Council Members, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to present to you today. Uh, so, I'll just start off by saying that Ledge Road is a residential road. Again, Ledge Road is a residential road. And in case this hasn't been heard yet, Ledge Road is a residential road. This is the premise of my communication with you today. My name is David Petrangelo, and I uh, am here along uh, with um, uh, to provide you with a formal letter of opposition to the Zoning Bylaw Amendment 2014, Doodley Dude Mountain Farms Limited. Um, so on May the 4th, 2022, a mere 12 weeks ago, my partner and I, Kent Deeks, decided to move to the Trent Lakes uh, area from Kawartha Lakes, specifically to 61 Ledge Road, to begin the transition to the new chapter of our lives that we all look forward to, and that chapter is supposed to include peace, quiet, serenity, and safety for our family. As the newest members of this amazing community, and specifically Red Ledge Road and Quarry Road, we've been welcomed and shown nothing um, but respect and love from our neighbors, and I dare say an idyllic environment for our upcoming retirement. Unfortunately, this all seems to have been falling apart for us, um, as we've come to uh, now know that the once celebrated defeat uh, to allow a quarry, quarry to use a residential road uh, to remove aggregate has come back to life. I've heard people reiterate a story, and interestingly enough, Gord said today that some, you know, that, well, you bought on Ledge Road. What did you expect? For this record here, I did not buy on Ledge Road. I bought on a residential road called Ledge Road. In retrospect, I am wondering why there was no obvious signs to inform the public that Trent Lakes was still entertaining using a residential road to allow for a haul route. But David, you should have done your due diligence in purchasing your retirement home for $1.325 million. Yes, that is how much we paid to live on Ledge Road. Well, to those that don't know me, let me tell you, I'm a bit of a pit bull when it comes to due diligence. And let me assure you, we did do our due diligence in pro buying this property. Unfortunately, due diligence only goes so far uh, when new reports are coming out by third parties with errors, omissions, and outright inaccuracies based on interpretations. From where I sit, watching all this unfold, some in the Trent Lakes administration want this to pass, come hell or high water. But that will be a discussion for a later another time. I will tell you the only anomaly that was brought to our attention by our lawyer when purchasing our home 12 weeks ago was that a portion of Ledge Road was, was a forced road. Now, thank you, Dan, so much for speaking to that because it, it, it looks like there's a lot of, you know, I, I think this is the, the, the thing that's really interesting for me to have seen uh, throughout doing my due diligence is that everyone talks about assumed road, assumed road, assumed road, but nobody talks about what a forced road is. So what is a forced road? Forced road means, and, and, and hear this clearly, because this is the crux of this entire discussion on this hall route. What is, a, what is a forced road? A forced road means a publicly used existing roadway on private land, usually to get around an obstacle that prevents a road from being built on surveyed public road allowance. I'm assuming the original quarry road through that big gully. Um, only the municipality and not the private owners is fully responsible and liable for an incident or accident that occurs on forced roads. Widening forced roads require the municipality to negotiate with private land owners. The municipality would need to need to a survey, a transfer deed from the registered owner, and a partial discharge of any mortgage affecting the private property. I can tell you that neither I nor any on the affected portion of the forced road or the not so not, uh, uh, term used uh, by the presenter uh, for Dudney, uh, the deviant part of the road uh, with us uh, has, has no, none of us have been um, have been approached by anyone to negotiate any changes to this. I can tell you unequivocally that no one affected by this forced road or deviation 
allowance are willing to make any concessions that allowed for change of the ledge road by widening or any other changes required for us to give up even one inch our property. My understanding is that Dudney Mountain Farms Limited has had the opportunity to take his aggregate out of the property in a manner that would be much less intrusive to residents, but I suspect that this was not pursued due to cost constraints and probably thinking Ledge Road was the path of least resistance. But I can assure you that the people of this community have the fortitude, means, and wherewithal to continue to resist this proposal by equally protecting our investments, our safety, and our sanity. When looking at the aspect of safety in our neighborhood, I'd like for you to all have a little, uh, have an empathetic look at our situation. Look at it through our eyes in your own life. So what do neighbors, what, what do you, what do you do in neighborhoods when you and your family or neighbors want to exercise or commune? You go for a walk, a job, in, jog in your neighborhood. If you live in a suburb community setting, you do this on a sidewalk. Why? Because it's the safest place to travel on foot. What do you do in an urban setting? Well, you walk on your neighborhood roads. And how is it possible on an, in, in an urban community? We're able to do this. Um, mm. You are able to do it with the, are you able to do this with the knowledge that there's going to be 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever the number is, because they, they seem to change depending on the report and who's talking. And as Gord said today, the approximate and generally, and these are the words that continue to get used today. So how do you do that when you don't know what's happening? Tractor trailers are hauling megatons of aggregate down a street. Isn't this what the honorable members of council expect of their representatives to protect them from harm and injury? Well, this is what we expect too. We want to be able to walk, jog, and do all, all other do what all other communities do without the fear of injury or death. Unless one chooses to live on a county or provincial road, we all expect to be protected and safe in our neighborhoods from uh, uh, vehicles that may uh, harm us. We expect our representatives to keep communities together and not allow for this continued assault on our well-being. We choose to live in a neighborhood that was quiet, vibrant with wildlife, and most importantly, safe. We expect that that forced road would afford us that opportunity as new landowners. So now that we have purchased our retirement dream home and to fa now face the potential nightmare of a hall route, who can we expect to compensate us for the loss of enjoyment, loss of sanity, and loss of our property value? I can tell you that during my due diligence, I contacted Trent Lakes with zero information concerning a potential aggregate uh, um, provided to me uh, as a new homeowner to the community. When I called, I was told to look on the website. Uh, there was no signs anywhere telling me, you know, stay away, alert, don't buy here, there's going to be a quarry. I am not opposed to the quarry, I am opposed to this hall route. But alas, here we are facing this monster of a quarry that seems to have come back to life. And here we are before you for the first time, imploring you all to think about you uh, in your own homes on your residential road with our families and community. Do you want to have the nightmare rolling down your quiet neighborhoods? I suspect that the answer to that would be no. Again, Ledge Road is a residential road. With regards to acceptable noise level, I will only uh, say that we move to a community in the woods to get away from acceptable noise levels. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. What do I mean by that? Well, I think about uh, how, how quiet our community is. This is why people come here, to live in community of minimal noise and to live in an area well below acceptable noise levels. This is certainly why we are here. Lastly, if this is true, truly in the best interest of Cortha Lakes to allow, sorry, uh, Trent Lakes to allow the project at all costs, uh, then make that known to the public. Allow people to move to this community with information on where you stand so that uh, they're not caught off guard like we have been. Ultimately, if you or Dooney Mountain uh, would like to purchase my 25 acres for $2.5 million for us to move on, we're all ears for that type of negotiation. For these reasons, we implore the honorable members of the council to reject the proposal. Uh, thank you. And, and I just will add, um, um, you know, um, to, uh, you know, the, the, the deputy mayor is showing a lot of bias by his his reactions here. So I just do want to make sure that's put onto the record. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Okay, and we'll go back to Ed Leardon. I believe he may have resolved his technological issues. I'm unmuting him.
Peers were still unable to hear Ed, so I don't know if you've submitted written correspondence, but perhaps you could submit it um, after the meeting. And I'll go back to Linda Pham. Have I muted you? Yes, thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Windover, council members, staff, and consultants. Our names are David and Linda Fom, and we reside at 125 Ledge Road. This letter serves, or actually a submitted letter, but anyway, we would like to state our appreciation for the opportunity to present our concerns about the proposed haul route. We moved to Ledge Road on August 30th, 2017, to what we considered our dream home on 10 beautiful acres enjoying the quiet and nature. Other than the continued attempt by Dooney Mountain Farms to force the haul route on our residential road, we haven't, en we haven't enjoyed living here and built friendships and community with our neighbours. We have enjoyed the quiet in nature that living here has provided. It is quiet 99% of the time and the most you can hear is the rustling of the leaves and the traffic is also very intermittent. And I won't touch on the, um, on the number of trucks because um, it's been well covered and um, the fact that uh, in order to meet the, uh, the new haul route agreement, they've reduced the trucks from 41 to 14 per hour, um, you know, says it all right there. Um, so, and I would just like to draw attention to the alternative haul route Based on the proposed road improvements on that drawing submitted by Dooney Mountain Farms, it shows a new driveway on our property to run parallel across the neighbor's property, only identified as a rural building lot. That document also, also shows that our property, dwelling 2024, as being owned by the Eastmans. This error was failed to be identified on the submission as being incorrect. Our only thought is that the document has not been updated to show the changes that have occurred on Ledge Road since 2017 and that the proponent resubmitted dated documents and they were accepted by the municipality and the County of Peterborough. Also, the rural building lot between uh, 2024, our home, and dwelling 2008, uh, the Jories, as noted on the document, had a home constructed there and has existed since 2018. That home was previously owned by Cody Beers and then sold to Matt Cowan and Jennifer Doust in April of 2020. So this erroneous um, omission uh, slipped by during the review of the said document and was accepted. We would also like to make note at this time that the proponent has never discussed the proposed changes to our property. Should this not be mutually agreed upon when it concerns someone's private property and changing one's access to their home? Who pays for this? Would we not have to agree to these changes to our personal property? Not only that, has anyone talked to our neighbours Matt and Jennifer about this change as it will affect their property as well with our driveway running in front of their home? Not to mention that even the simple drawing does not, does not indicate how we would enter Ledge Road from this new driveway and what interference this driveway will be to our neighbor's existing driveway. The drawing has a cul-de-sac. The definition of a cul-de-sac is also known as a dead end. No through road, no exit road. It is a street with one inlet or outlet. According to this drawing and other construction drawings, this area is not a dead end road. So how can a cul-de-sac be constructed? If it is constructed, how can that be done within the confines of the road allowance? How does this work with traffic flow subject to the hauling trucks on a through road? There is also a missing draw drawing on that um, driveway on that drawing located at L22 C15, which is 19 Ledge Road. That has been there since 2017. There is also a hydro pole located on the corner right at our property line fronting the road. And we will not give permission for that pole to be reloc relocated on our property in order to accommodate the hull route. We have very serious concerns about our well being affected by the proposed heavy truck traffic and wonder about the mitigation and financial responsibility for any damage caused by this. Will it be the proponent or the municipality? 
What happens to our water source if it, if it is compromised by the quarry operation? Since we all know that the underground waterways supplying our water may be affected and also by the increased vibration caused by heavy truck traffic. This has happened to other residential properties with wells that were located in the vicinity of quarries in other areas in Ontario. We cannot be guaranteed that they will stay above the water table while mining the aggregate. The most important issue is our safety, the safety of our neighbours and those visiting our properties with having to contend with heavy truck traffic. Currently, we are able to walk, cycle and ride our snowmobiles on the road to get to the trails. We fail to see how, if this haul route gets approved, that we will be able to enjoy the freedom and safety to do this as an adult, let alone the children in our neighbourhood walking to the bus stop. The proposed haul route fails to ensure public safety, the loss in quality of life and the enjoyment we currently experience and the financial loss to be incurred and the increase of truck traffic noise even at 40 kilometer speed limit which will not be enforced and this has only been put on paper so that noise mitigation would not be an issue for the rezoning application. Dudney Mountain Farms has had a lot of time to design and relocate the haul route where the impact would be, yet, would be less, yet he has chosen to waste his valuable time and money on this contentious issue and raise the ear of his neighbours. Based on the documents provided and that we have read through, there is still no defined haul route. There are enough inconsistencies in the documentation provided that indicates he is still developing the haul route as he goes in order to make it fit and that there is no solid and acceptable road construction plans. They are in fact using samples to provide illustration because they have no real plan for ledge and quarry roads. We understand that this area is rich in aggregate resources and yet, and yet Lakehurst was able to have a bylaw passed that no quarries will go through there. How many homes does it take to have this happen? What are their safety concerns? We are sure the situation was similar to ours. They, they will, there will be 21 plus properties and homes on, resident, on this residential road that will be affected should this haul route be passed. Should the municipality really have continued to issue building permits since 2010, allowing people to continue build knowing full well that a mega quarry, as per Schedule C, was being supported by the prov province, the municipality and the county of Peterborough. We have been here since 2017 and three new homes have been constructed at considerable cost to the homeowner. They are beautiful homes and full-time residences and now a fourth home is under construction. How could the municipality in good conscience let this happen knowing this proposed quarry and haul route would negatively impact taxpaying residents? The MHBC report to council did not even touch on the social, environmental and economic impact to the residents of this area. In previous discussions with Mayor Clarkson in 2021, she stated that, quote, the most important thing for the township is to make sure that if and when this quarry goes forward, that we have got the best deal, that water is protected and that all the things set down and there is a lot of them, there, that's what the peer reviews are for. You peer review fresh water, you peer review how deep they can go. It's not sort of a one size fits all, end of quote. Since having that discussion with her, I have been trying to figure out who is getting the best deal. The quarry operation, the municipality, the county of Peterborough, it will certainly not be in the best deal for the residents who already reside on ledge and quarry roads. Not even the water will be saved if this happens. I also wonder how under Appendix E, updated draft haul route agreement, dated July 21st, 2022, that this document was accepted as correct with Bev Matthews as mayor, signee for the municipality when the elections aren't until the fall, leads me to wonder what else was missed in the review of documentation surrounding this proposal. We are not against someone earning a living or a business. We are against someone profiting from that living while negatively impacting others by loss of enjoyment of their personal property, quality of life, enduring safety issues and suffering personal financial loss because of this project. We are very concerned about the financial and negative impact to our property value should ledge and quarry road 
become a haul route. Should council determine that they are in agreement with this haul route, we, re we strongly request that the only viable solution is to expeditiously expropriate all properties for purchase at fair market value, including the valuable, valuable aggregate that all our homes are sitting on, and to allow our community to move. This is no way to live out retirement with this hanging over our heads and disrupting our peaceful lives. Respectfully, we are asking council to deem this request for zoning amendment as not feasible and to not approve this application. I would just like to add another note. Throughout the presentation presented by Dudney Mountain, the operating time seemed to shift from six to seven, seven to five, seven to seven. There's no real plan. There's no real plan for this. And I just feel that it, we're being subjected unnecessarily. Thank you for your time and thank you for letting, allowing me to speak. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to Ed and give him one more shot. Ed, I'm unmuting you now. Hello, can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. yes. All right, thank you, Bianca and Jesse for allowing me three swings of the bat here to try and, and get my uh, prepared marks to you. Uh, really appreciate that. Good morning, actually, good afternoon. Um, Deputy Mayor, councillors, and everyone attending this public meeting. I am speaking to you today as a concerned nearby resident, my home being on Bass Lake Road on Nogies Creek in the municipality of Trent Lakes, downstream of the proposed Dudney Quarry. Since I arrived in Trent Lakes on Nogies Creek over seven years ago, I've been hearing about this proposed new quarry up on Ledge Road, which is also right by the sanctuary on Bass Lake Road and nearby Nogies Creek. Over these seven years, I've learned some of the details of the proposal, efforts by the proponent to make the amendments to bylaws and zoning to allow the quarry and this haul route, as well as efforts by residents and property owners to oppose allowing this proposed quarry. Now, I realize today's focus uh, is on the proposed haul route. My comments are a bit broader, and uh, I hope I hope that's going to be okay. Um, notwithstanding, I'll go ahead with my remarks. So, as a nearby resident, I have a number of concerns regarding this proposed new quarry plan to operate in my backyard. Impacts, first, impacts to the surrounding and very sensitive area, which include wetlands, the sanctuary, as I mentioned, and the waters of Nogies Creek itself are likely to be highly detrimental, even deadly, to many species of wildlife in the area, some of which are on the endangered list. Think of the Blanding's turtle, for one example. Devastating in many ways, including some we can't even yet know. Removal of habitat, likely injuring or killing wildlife, blasting, which again can injure or kill wildlife, or will frighten wildlife within the range of the blasting noise, so they will scatter. Um, think of our fireworks bylaws. Leaving their nests and dens, abandoning their young or young running away and not returning home, too young to survive on their own. Leaching to neighboring lands and waters. Again, the sanctuary in Ogies Creek is what I'm thinking of. Uh, we've heard of, of the actual landowners along there. Um, of ammonias, nitrates, nitrites, and whatever else is used in a quarry's operations, impacting a much larger area as the water carries these elements downstream into Pigeon Lake, not good for anything in the water or anything or anyone using the water. There are many residents full-time and seasonal living on Nogies Creek who use the water from the creek, not only for swimming, bathing, fishing and recreation, but also as drinking water and water for the residents. They are so concerned about potential impacts that the quarry will have on the water quality in the creek that for at least 10 years now, they pay over $1,200 each year to get samples of water from three locations on the creek, downstream of the proposed quarry, tested for 49 elements, including arsenic, by the way. The idea that the water in Nogi's Creek will become so polluted that it can't be used by residents on the creek is implausible. Now, I know these remarks aren't relative to the haul route, but to the quarry in general. So I, again, please bear with me. There's also an underground cave system neighboring the proposed quarry site. I think many of you know that, um, but it's recently gaining in awareness and attracting cavers to come and explore them. I don't know much about caves and caving, and frankly, they scare me a bit, 
but for many caves are attractions. And I've learned that this cave has some unique properties and is somewhere on the top 10 or even the top five list of caves in Ontario. I wonder if quarry activities like blasting, for example, would affect this unique attraction, which I believe has the potential to grow into a big tourist attraction for our area for general or specific to cavers. Um, secondly, the latest proposed haul route down Ledge and Quarry Roads and onto County Road 36 both directions will have impacts which have been voiced by many uh, today and earlier. Since the original proposal about 10 years ago, there are a number of new residents on Ledge and Quarry Roads and businesses which has increased the use of these roads by their residents and their children and the general public. Besides increased noise and dust from quarry trucks traveling this route, there's increased danger of collisions and pedestrians and cyclists and dogs being walked of being struck. This route is also a school bus route used to transport local children to and from school. That's twice a day. These children get to and from their school bus often on foot. I'm sounding an alarm that these children will be at greater risk of injury and worse from these trucks. I have to point out that I've often witnessed truck drivers not always obeying speed limits and other rules of the road, and that's just a general statement. Dust, noise, injury, death. These are some of the impacts to the residents, children, dogs, and the general public who use these roads. Third, once the trucks turn on to County Road 36, either direction, we get into impacts of the flow of traffic, dust and dirt for motorists, and wear and tear damage on the pavement. If any of you have been caught approaching one of the existing quarries with entrances and exits onto County Road 36, where a heavily loaded truck is slowly turning onto County Road 36, you'll know it takes quite some time for these trucks to get to speed. And sometimes they don't even see you coming, or sometimes they just don't wait. I've pressed hard on my brakes more than once. That's an increased risk of collisions. If there are no trucks blocking your way, then often in the summer, you drive through the dirt and dust they leave behind on the road at the quarry entrances, blowing up a cloud of dirt, or if it's been raining, it's mud. We all experience the damage made to the roads by these heavy haulers, potholes and the pavement breaking every year, especially in the spring. We know this is a problem because the municipality is a road restriction on many roads in the spring. The ruts from the weight of the wheels on the pavement are a problem. I ride a motorcycle sometimes, and this area attracts many riders from all over, and it's great for tourism. Ruts in the road are a hazard to two-wheel vehicles. All of this requires road maintenance and repair every year, and I'm not sure who's paying for it, but I think my tax dollars are a part of that. Lastly, there's a natural spring known as an aquifer or um, artesian well. We've heard a lot of people talk about this today, and that's at the northwest corner of Quarry Road and County Road 36. This is some of the nice and cleanest water around, and it's there, natural, no bottled water purchase needed, where the plastic bottle gets tossed and not always into a recycling bin. I've drank from it many times, perhaps you have too. This natural aquifer has provided generations of residents, cottagers and visitors, visitors with good clean drinking water for decades. I drive by there often and there's usually someone there, sometimes lineups, filling up big containers for their use, maybe even take it back home to the city because it's so good in all four seasons. Think of the extreme effort engineering that went into the many aqueducts which were built around the world thousands of years ago just to get precious water to drink. Modern times sees reservoirs, dams, water towers, thousands of kilometers of pipes, filtration, purification systems, just to get good clean drinking water. And here we have it flowing at our doorstep, coming from the ground, no cost, no charge. During the long weekend in May this year, we had a major storm called a Redresho blow through our area. A lot of damage, trees down, Hydro poles down, leaving thousands without power for weeks. Thankfully, no one was injured or killed. And no water to drink. This natural, easily accessible, free source of water was the only source of drinking water for many in the area for weeks affected by the storm. A godsend. In fact, anytime the power goes out, pumps and wells, streams and lakes don't pump. No water. As I understand it, this natural aquifer will either be removed, and now I've heard possibly a well replacing it, um, and relocated. So how will that happen? Well, we'll see. Um, I'm not sure how a well will 
replace a natural occurring aquifer that's spewing out water uh, out of the ground. Um, will we need to build an aqueduct like the ancient Romans? <laughs> and will the quality of that water be affected? Who will build it? Well, we hear the proponents say he'll dig a well for us. I'm not too sure. Some might see this aquifer as something trivial. I say who can say who cares? We should all care. This is not trivial. Um, and as a footnote, um, in the presentation by uh, the, the engineers, um, and I think it was Mr. Copeland, uh, made a very quick reference to a second quarry that might use this haul route. And it's the first and only time that I've heard it was very quickly mentioned. Um, I didn't catch the name of this other quarry, um, but if it's true, and we'd have to go back to their presentation or, or possibly ask, um, is that include the 14 trucks an hour? Or is this something in addition to brand new? Thank you very much for listening to me. And again, to the staff for helping me with my audio problems. Thank you. Okay, I will now um, enable the raise a hand feature for anyone who didn't register to speak, you'll be able to raise your hand now. Okay, first I have Karen Marks. Karen, you're still muted. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. I just wanna say as a nearby resident as well, um, should this be allowed to be pushed through again? And I followed the first um, whole set of circumstances, including going to the court in Oshawa. So I've seen it and I saw the process and I saw them say the whole route and the noise was not going to be acceptable. And now the fact that somehow they're able to just say, oops, we'll just change that. We'll only, we'll only let 14 trucks an hour go by. What I'd like to say is who would be enforcing this? And the reason I say that is we're right now on Nogi's Creek going through a short-term rental infraction where bylaws are being broken. And this council who you're looking at right now is sitting back watching it, using COVID as an excuse saying, and that would be Ms. Walden, saying that they don't have to at this point, they'll leave it with public health to try and enforce the septic systems. So they have, an, they have an instance right now where the infractions are happening, where someone is renting to 16 people, septic will only hold for six, and they're not stepping in. So what would be the enforcement if that company was allowed to do this? And who's going to say that there's only 14 trucks? I, I don't see any enforcement already. And Mayor Clarkson isn't even here she's a big part of this and now retiring so i assume maybe she's not going to be involved that's it that's all i want to say i'd like to know what the enforcement would be thank you next i have katie Krilo. can you hear me okay. yes uh, thanks, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Councillor for holding this meeting and hearing from the public. My name is Katie Krelov. I represent the Wilderness Committee, which is a charitable environmental organization that works to protect uh, natural areas and species at risk. Uh, so the concerns that I uh, bring to you today uh, regarding the proposed haul route is whether the design construction uh, and location and proposal complies with the legal requirements uh, and regulations under the province's Endangered Species Act, uh, and specifically uh, requirements for protected to, for protect for protected species designated under the act as threatened or endangered. Um, so these are legal uh, requirements. 
Um, and in light of the act and the legal requirements under the act, questions that I have and that I think need to be considered um, are, has the proposed hall route in this particular formation uh, been assessed uh, and the improvements been assess assessed as to whether there uh, is the presence of species protected under the act as endangered or threatened and of or present and or presence of critical habitat for those species which is also protected under the act so it's not just the presence and I want to reiterate this of species it's also their presence of critical habitat uh, so from my understanding of the area and uh, knowledge uh, these could include uh, what's already been mentioned, Blanding's turtles and other species that are threatened, uh, hognose snake as well, five-lined skink, whippoorwill, which is a bird species, and various bat species. And so again, the Endangered Species Act covers the presence uh, of these species, but also their critical habitat uh, and the effects to critical habitat of the construction of grading, of paving. And so this would likely include um, nesting, uh, so nesting sites, for example, for turtles or for uh, that are along the road, um, as well as overwintering sites uh, are, are considered critical habitat. So if such an assessment did or does find the presence of these protected species, the act requires the proponent uh, develop mitigation strategies and undertake those mitigation strategies into the proposal. So again, some of these mitigation strategies could include uh, in the timing of construction to avoid nesting, uh, nesting uh, and overwintering sites, um, as well as wildlife crossing, building wildlife crossing considerations into the design of the road. And that could be include things like um, barriers uh, and, and, that, and, and other features that will, will um, allow for wildlife to safely cross. Um, and again, these are legal requirements under the Endangered Species Act. Under the act as well, if it is found uh, that the um, in order the the minister of the environment, the ministry of the environment needs to to look at these mitigation uh, plans and approve them. If it is found that even with mitigation, harm uh, to species at risk protected under the act uh, cannot be avoided then the proponent needs to apply for a, a variety of different permits. There's different permits. So uh, one of them that I've experienced that goes <coughs> along with quarry um, sites and the whole roads is generally required an overall benefit permit <coughs> in which the proponent needs to demonstrate that well that they will both do whatever is required, whatever is uh, available to mitigate the harm, they will also have to create habitat to give the species affected an overall benefit. Again, these are legal requirements under the Endangered Species Act. So I bring this to the council's attention. Um, I realize that the that the zoning bylaw right now is focused, amendment is focused and the OMB um, uh, requirements are focused on mitigation of noise impacts, but the concerns I have about meeting the Endangered Species Act requirement, I think, need to be considered because they speak to the feasibility of the Hall route construction and what uh, and what has been presented, um, and that is one of the requirements of the OMB uh, finding as well is, is the feasibility of the proposed high, haul route. And it's, if the haul route as proposed does not take into the consideration the regulations and requirements under the Endangered Species Act and build them into the design plans, then it calls into the question the feasibility of the haul route. Um, and I will just point out that uh, 
there is, if these considerations are not taken into account by the proponent, um, there is the potential for liability under the Endangered Species Act. And I will refer you to um, a case that was in the city of Bracebridge, uh, where a justice of the peace has recently uh, approved um, a, a private citizen's uh, hearing, a request for a hearing regarding the municipality's uh, construction of a road and the failure to get a permit and to do due diligence under the Endangered Species Act. So uh, I'm, I haven't heard or didn't hear from uh, the engineers and the presentations that we heard, any considerations or any uh, 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 any assessment for to start with, um, and that if there is an assessment, it, 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 there was referred to an environmental assessment of the site itself, the quarry site itself, but I didn't hear anything about an assessment of this particular haul route proposal. Um, and if there is a assessment of species at risk, or protected species under the Act's presence and critical habitat presence, and that should be made available to the public. Um, and then I didn't hear anything about um, any med mitigation efforts or um, application for a permit uh, to harm species at risk, which again, falls under the Endangered Species Act. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to bring that to the attention of Council, and I do think it is something that Council should consider in assessing the feasibility of the proposed haul route. Uh, so thank you for your time, and I'm uh, open to answering any questions if Council has uh, today or in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, next I have Adri Eastman. you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for letting me present to you today. Um, my voice will get a little shaky. I've been doing this for a long time and it's, it's uh, well, you know what it's like. So I'm Adrienne Eastman. I live at 19 Ledge Road. This presentation today is my official opposition to zoning bylaw amendment 2014 Duty Mountain Farms. 10 years. It's been 10 years and I call it challenging, not fighting. Every way you look at it, it's been costly. Costly to me financially, costly in emotion, which you can tell by my voice, <laughs> costly in relationships. I'm not here today, though, to talk about me. I am here to present you with concerns that are valid for all the residents. I want to provide you with information so that you can make, make the best decision for the municipality and its citizens. A municipality must, one, structure and manage its administration and budgeting and planning process to give priority to the basic needs of the community and to promote the social and economic development of the community. And two, participate in national and provincial programs. In all honesty, I think our council and staff are definitely working towards these objectives and doing a great job. I researched further. I needed to know what are the main functions of the municipality. I found 26 items and it really did surprise me. The responsibilities are far more exceeding than provincial and federal. Some of the items in include, and not all of them, ambulance, animal control, arts and culture, childcare, economic development, fire services, garbage and recycling, library, parks and recreation, long-term care and senior housing, maintenance of roads, police services, planning new com community developments and, and enhancing existing neighborhoods, public health, sidewalks, social services, and snow removal. The pande pandemic was a perfect example of how our municipality took public health seriously. They chose to follow guidelines that protect the citizens, people over profit. The pandemic unfortunately did create social and economic impacts that we are still seeing the repercussions of. We can thank council and staff for implementing the precautions and taking our health and safety as a priority. Now moving forward, we have to align the impacts of health and safety with social and economic values. Do these values and issues change when we talk aggregate? I am well aware of the provincial policy statement. It is a planning tool that is used in the province of Ontario to guide planning decisions. It must be read in its entirety. Each side of the proposal, for or against, will pull out the policy that works for their argument. 
It's a catch-22, and you've already heard the other side today. Section 2.521, mineral aggregates should be protected for the long-term use and, and deposits identified. Again, our deposits were identified and passed in 2010 by council with no maps present. The aggregate resource inventory papers, which they call the ARIP in, in the aggregate industry, show aggregate all over our whole municipality, including Lakehurst, but we pass a bylaw that says no quarries will go there. And the aggregate is under many homes, including the one I'm sitting on right now. People in homes first. There was an aggregate committee that many previous council were guests at, as well as county staff, and never a mention of this proposal. Schedule C is not a designation. It's a map showing you where the aggregate is. 2.522, extraction shall happen in a manner which minimizes social, economic, and environmental impacts. The definition of minimize, minimize, reduce, especially something unwanted or unpleasant to the smallest amount or degree. 2.524, mineral aggregates shall be protected from development and activities that would preclude or hinder their expansion or continued use or which would be incompatible for reasons of public health, public safety, or environmental impact. We know the municipality gave out building permits without warning and or regards for the deposits. The deposits weren't protected. 2.525, in known deposits of mineral aggregate resources and on adjacent lands, development and activities which would preclude or hinder the establishment of new operations or access to the resources shall only be permitted if the resource use would not be feasible, the proposed land use or development serves a greater long-term public interest, and C, issues of public health, public safety, and environmental impact are addressed. As you know, public health and safety have not been addressed. Severances happen, and they are included in development. They should not have been allowed. Now the municipality wants an aggregate study for every severance. Now they do. After today's meeting, the peer reviewers for the other side will come back with <clears throat> these same policies and turn them into a way that works for their argument. So you as a decision maker will have to be content that everything aligns with the PPS, the Planning Act, the Township OP, and the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw. Our own Township Official Plan states in Section 5105D, as a general policy, a mineral aggregate operation or a quarry should not be established within 500 meters of a sensitive land use. The address for Dubny Quarry is 543 Ledge Road. And by the way, the proponent lives on the adjacent property that doesn't have an address except a lot in concession number. One of your residents just built a home and their address is 552 Ledge Road. It was a cottage prior, prior but the proponent has always been maintained it was a hunt camp and it didn't count. So this isn't a surprise. 10 years, three different terms of council, many public meetings, many OMB, LPAT meetings, divisional court, lots of money, lots of time, lots of life. Somehow there must be some merit in our concerns, otherwise this entity would have been running down the road by now. We all know that there are three sides to the, to the story, theirs, ours, and the truth. Truth is, no one has given this the green light except back in 2013. And you can imagine the repercussions because there was no road engineering, there was nothing. Many staff, municipal and county have voiced their support for this proposal. I have been told it's coming whether you like it or not. You never hear, I can't imagine what you're thinking. It must be terrible having to think of a whole route outside your door with so many trucks. We all have many concerns and they are no different now than 10 years ago. Let's see the surveys of our property. What about our wells? What happens when you remove the historic staple? Where and how do we access our mailboxes? The school bus, we're gonna put a hammerhead on another hall route? Widening the road, but, to, but we only accommodate the trucks, not people. The slope to the downloaded highway, tree removal, pedestrians, cyclists, recreational vehicles, wildlife, noise, dust, site plans, hours, accessory functions, half loads. The radius of my corner on Ledge Road, on the forest road, by the way, that does not even appear on, uh, I think it was Ledge Road Sheet 7, driveway number 19, isn't even on the drawings. Um, we also need to know timing of construction and, in, and inconvenience, the enforcement, the stop sign, speed limit. Why is the municipality getting $500 for every truck over the limit? What do the residents get? 
the engineering was done by a company that all of a sudden came out of the woodwork this morning because he wasn't there last week. Uh, council, council just listened to a presentation for engineering on Bessie Road North for 600 meters. I think the amount for engineering was $75,000. Let's see what the engineering cost for this proposal was. Remember, we do not have a we do have a bylaw that was enacted by Ted Oaks that states no construction will be paid by ratepayers. Not sure why there's a cost breakdown and why it's so important. You also just heard the proposal for a noise barrier around the new dedicated mechanics facility or central depot. Noise mitigation is necessary and expensive. Will that facility be comparable to six days a week here? Play plans show 1.2 million tone per year. If a tender for a highway went out and was won, how would the proponent proceed? Melang Farm Quarry was 2,300 acres approximately, and they were going to see an increase of 300 trucks an hour. I contacted the MNRF after the last tribunal and I asked if they had reduced the tonnage to 900K. It never happened. And we're going to let Dudney be self compliant? Really? 10 years. 10 years. And Mr. Ritchie has not found another way out. 10 years and we worked to protect our property from monstrous walls in front of them. 10 years and we have continually worked together legally to protect ourselves and others from an unsafe and unhealthy proposal. We have been respectful. Our quality of life has already been challenged by continuing this battle. I have been contemplating about making this a personal thing and I didn't want to, but I have to share my experience with you because it's real and it's uncomfortable today as it is, as it has been for the last 10 years. Mr. Ritchie does not have a great track record. Why is this important? It is because he is trying to be intimidating for years. He isn't the developer that sits down and works issues out. He threatens to sue. His profanity is outrageous. And this may be awkward, and I, and I don't like to make it awkward for you, but it's the truth. He had a person airlifted off his property. That man was never compensated. He clear-cut 400 acres after being told not to by the MNRF. He was in violation of the site plans. He paid taxes on a managed forest after he clear-cut 400 acres. He had mulch hauled out when half roads were on. He, start, he started to widen this road without permission. He said he had it from a former employee. There wasn't a safety protocol to be found. He has admitted at driving at me, but the sun was in his eyes. We have a video of close encounters at high rates of speeds with other residents. He managed to sever property that doesn't front on a municipally maintained road, created two new zones and resides on a property zoned Rural 54, residential uses are not permitted. And even if it is legal non-conforming, he has sold the property apparently, so he should be off that property by now. He filled in an environmentally protected pond after kicking out the students and professor from Trent University. So forgive me if I'm a little nervous and apprehensive about this man who isn't a road building company and who most certainly doesn't want to work with any of us, build our road with our safety in mind. I don't think I'm being unreasonable to be afraid of Duty Mountain Farms providing us with protection from anything. I don't get any pleasure in stating this. I don't like making you as counsel uncomfortable or even the proponent, but this is a snapshot of his character. This is not a personal issue. Once again, it's the truth. There's facts, phone calls, and photos to back it up. I am not against aggregate. I have friends in the business. I have family in the business, and I'm not against Mr. Ritchie making a profit and supporting his wife and family. This quarry has a license application. He doesn't have a license, but it was all done after the homes and residents were already here, establishing a life. If Dudney was there and approved by all the regulatory measures first, we'd understand. Everyone says you should have done your due diligence. No, this proposal shouldn't have been so secretive, and it really was and justifying it with what were you thinking for a road doesn't cut it anymore. NIMBYism, which is not my backyard syndrome, isn't in play anymore either because we have one and we also know that we have an abundance of quarries. This one just wants to come down through a residential community with 66 feet maximum to incorporate all of us. If you put yourself in your shoes knowing what we have, what we have now and what we're expected to live with, you would completely understand. There is no sign saying aggregate resource area. Even in this round of this public meeting, where was it advertised? 
I'm a Lakefield Herald and Peterbilt Examiner. Nobody gets it here. Good thing I advertised that this spring. What I am against is the uncertainty of this project. I'm against taking rights away from others for profit and benefit of solely one person. I love where I live. We all do. We could have left, but it's home. I want to walk my dogs. I want to run and I want to use my rope. We walk with the flashlight early in the morning. One of your staff at Snowpots can attest to that. We enjoy the outside every season, every day. This road that needs to accommodate heavy truck traffic, general public, pedestrians, etc., needs to be the county road standards. There isn't enough room unless you expropriate. It needs to be safe for everyone from one end to the other. The Melling Song Quarry, it had many entrances and exits. We are still uncertain to the expansion of more quarries on this road. Melanchthon never went forward. The resolution on July 7, 2011 included, and I quote, and whereas there is potential for severe change to the health and safety plus social economic well-being of the citizens of this township, therefore be it resolved that given the scope of this project and the potential impacts on the citizens, the Township of Melanchthon requests a full environmental assessment of this application. Council members, I'm asking you to protect us. I'm asking you to consider the reality of our situation. We don't live on a highway. We don't have that extra space to ensure our safety. We shouldn't have to get used to it. If the aggregate is more important this time, then have the proponent buy us all out at fair market value, and we will move somewhere where we can live a safe, healthy, happy life, because we deserve it. It's, and it's a choice that everybody should have. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Good. Thank you now, Bill. Now, no. No. next we have George Hewison. I've unmuted you. You are still self muted, George. Yeah, I'll move on to the next, but I'll come back to you, George. Uh, next, we have Marie Windover. Ooh, am I muted? Yes, you are. Am I? Are, you can hear me now? Yes. yes we Terrific. Can. Okay. Thanks very much for having this meeting. Just uh, again, thanks to all the uh, participants that commented and stuff. I feel your pain uh, more than you realize. Um, the whole area is. Uh, of Trent Lakes is um, a highly vulnerable aquifer. If you look at the Ministry of Environment, Climate Change map, a conservation and parks map, you can get a copy and it'll show you this whole area is known as a highly vulnerable aquifer. So then you go into some more um, detail with it. There's some source water protection areas just below where Dudney's proposing this, the water that runs to that lovely little fresh water a stream there, um, it continues on and goes down into the residents down there and they have a water issue, they have a source water protection area. All I'm saying is the maps are out there people and people can look at them and you can see what's there. Um, a lot of these, uh, I wanna call them fly by night developers, they think that we don't have access to this kind of stuff and you do. Schedule 10 or Schedule C was brought in 2010, like Ms. Eastman just said, and it was put on top of people's properties that already lived there. You didn't even tell people that you were turning their areas into a known aggregate area. Uh, many people have gone to meetings. We've gone to the CBZs and told you certain things like you can't zone our properties as this because you've already exhausted those resources. I think all these people are asking you to do is look at the map, see that we're a highly vulnerable aquifer area. Water is our backbone. If you screw up our water, we got nothing. And just look at the maps, people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Emory. Yeah. Next, I have Pat Warren. I've unmuted you. Yes, uh, thank you, and <clears throat> thank you for uh, um, holding this meeting. I'm. Uh, I have a question from from Kawartha Lakes. I live near Bob Cajun, 
And I was wondering, um, has the city of Kawartha Lakes been circulated or consulted on the haul route as Highway 36 is already a very, very busy thoroughfare through Bob Cajun. There are other aggregate operations going down 36. And uh, um, so that's, that's just my question. I wanted to know if uh, Kawartha Lakes was consulted. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next I have Steve Latimer. Have I muted you? Good afternoon and thank you for taking my call. Um, so I have a few questions actually. Um, and I believe it was Mr. Williamson who said that the, the study that he did was not the normal process that they go through. I don't know if he's still on the on the line, um, but could he speak to that a little bit? If he is. It's not a question or answer. It's not a question and answer. So we, you okay, can, that's fine. That's we'll fine. Get... Okay, thank you. And um, let me just see then. So. I've heard the same thing over and over and over again. And as you know, I don't live in that area, but um, it's, uh, these are all familiar topics to me. Um, but so my concern is this, we hear about safety. You know, there's been lots of comments about how the new proposal is safer. So how is it safer than what's out there today? Um, you know, we bought a lifestyle. We've heard the same theme from everybody. We've moved from the city in a lot of cases to, to buy a rural lifestyle. And, you know, they're saying, yes, we people can walk safely. Why would they want to walk if they have the biggest trucks avail available going by four times or, you know, every four minutes or whatever? I certainly wouldn't. Um, and uh, what I also, what I'm very, very unclear on, it's what I wanted to ask Mr. Williamson, is that it seems that he was talking about 53 decibels uh, was an average per hour. So what is that today? I put it to you, it's probably nowhere near it. So what we need to talk about is the change. So what would bringing... Um, Hall route like this to Trent Lakes. What would how what impact is that is that going to have in and of itself? Because I'm looking on the uh, provincial sites and they're saying that um, the diesel trucks are 85 decibels by themselves. If it's an average, there is downtime. Um, so, and what kinds of noise? Um, you know, this, people talked about Jake brakes earlier. Uh, these are not these are not normal. Um, rural noises. So I guess the, what, what I'll finish with is that why are we even talking, still talking about this uh, OPA 41? It started 11 years ago. Um, things have changed. The demographic has changed considerably. Many people have moved to this area since then. Um, there, obviously, as we've gone through these presentations, people have said that that they're incomplete, they're in accurate documents. So it seems the discussion now is whether whether um, the noise will be acceptable or not. And if, if some if some way somebody finds a way to make it acceptable, then it's a go. Um, I, I that is I, I just cannot believe that that could be allowed to happen. There should be fresh applications starting over with everything is my opinion. So thank you very much for your time. And um, I do, I would like the answer to um, the question though about uh, the noise that, I'm sorry, Mr. Williamson said, what was different about this report than what they usually do? And um, I think some of you may have my email address. If you, if you could send it to me, I would appreciate it. Thank you. We will get your answers. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I will go back to George Hewison. I'll unmute you again. You'll have to unmute yourself and make your oral presentation.
Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I've listened with great interest. And first of all, thank you for uh, hang over time eating into your lunch hour um, to hear the last, uh, the last dregs. But I'd like to come at it from a different point of view. I've been involved in this, uh, this uh, episode since all of the OMB hearings. And I would say that Dudney Mountain is relying very exclusively on A, uh, the evidence that was came out of that OMB hearing and a divisional court decision. And in my opinion, really it's, it's, you're narrowed down now to talk about noise mitigation and in the hall route and uh, where the hall route is located. And it seems to me that misses the main point. Really there, as the previous caller just said, really you should be looking at a de novo application because the law has changed and i'm i'm delighted that uh, councillor lambs had raised the question because this reveals one of the laws that has changed just as recently as this year uh the relationship with indigenous people and the williams treaty in particular this changes everything hunting fishing all of these other rights and i'm hoping that council will work with our friends at curb lake because that was the very first question the chair of the omb said opening up the hearing. Does anybody have a, an indigenous interest in this in this whole proceedings? The very first question. Uh, so that law has changed, but there's something else has changed since uh, that divisional court uh, decision and the OMB, all the evidence was uh, that came out of those hearings. We were just getting involved in Paris and the climate conference in, in mm -hmm. Paris and Canada had yet, not yet developed its climate contingency plans. Ontario hadn't yet started to develop its plans. Aggregate was a very big part of, uh, of uh, climate change. And we can see it when we start talking about electric cars, electric trucks, electric vehicles, uh, developing transit because it's 25% of the uh, you know, carbon emissions is from, is from transit. And so we may be developing a, a a whole question of uh, uh, developing aggregate resources, but we're ignoring all the questions that everybody else is asking. And it seems to be completely irrelevant until you factor it in to the fact that laws are changing. And we, we were looking at 2030, uh, where we have to reduce emissions by 50% and by if we're gonna meet Paris and 100% net uh, emissions by a hundred percent by 50 years. Well, this quarry here has a 50 year life expectancy. Long, we'll all be gone by then, but it's our children and our grandchildren. And the question is, everything is changing, whether it's the Endangered Species Act, whether it's the water quality, all of these things, the laws are evolving. And so the question I think you need to think about as the leaders of our community is how how can we think to make this issue because this quarry is definitely unnecessary and certainly by 2030 it's going to be totally unnecessary and it'll be obvious to our children and uh, and we're going to be killing ourselves trying to uh, do noise mitigation and do all these other things in terms of safety and all these other things for what and so i think each of us have to consider where are we going to be by 2030 eight years from now uh, Everything has changed in the last, uh, since even this hearing, and it's changing daily. It's changing both here at Trent Lakes. We've heard it from people moving into the area, changing their lifestyle. It's changing our community. I've been here 35 years. I'm at Bass Lake. I've seen what the quarries, it's a, you know, I don't want to see a giant quarry in Trent Lakes. And particularly, I don't want to see it wrecked and our environment wrecked uh, when we consider, you know, the alternatives. There's a, there are other things we can be doing. This is a very unique place as previous callers have said, but I'd ask you to think about where we're going to be in 2030 and where we're gonna be in 2050. So thanks very much for hearing me. Thank you. Thank you. That is the end of the hands that I have raised. I'll give one more call for anyone that wants to make an oral submission. <clears throat> I have Dan Duke would like to speak again.
Yes. Um, can everybody hear me again? Am I on? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's possible to share my screen or not. Is that? I don't know. Uh, just one second, Dan. Okay. <clears throat> I've given you a request to share your screen, so you should be able to. Okay. Okay, so can everybody see this cross section I have up now? Yes. Okay, so yeah, so what we did, we, we looked at, now these are going back again to the 2020 drawings, I believe, and they've been updated since then. Also, one thing I heard this morning is that the, the original drawing showed a three and a half meter lane, but they're now three and a half meters plus a one meter shoulder. So the cross section I'm showing is two meters narrower than what's uh, what's currently being presented and it's been peer reviewed. So if we look, this is uh, Ledge Road. Um, there's stations along the way. This is 810 meters, I guess, north, um, just based on the drawings from uh, Lakeview Engineering. So if we look at the cross section here, um, based on there's proposing 150 millimeters of granular A, 540 millimeters of granular B. We take the original road elevation, um, approximate original ground elevation, and then we, we build the road up. They called for three to one side slopes. The OPSD drawing, uh, which is correct on the Lakeview drawing, show a half meter ditch below the granulars, which is correct. And we've plotted on the right of way limits. So you can see here that the, the right ditch is well outside the right of way. So technically, um, you know, there would be property requirements to take you out to the to the top of cut of that ditch. Um, it wasn't really cl real clear on the um, on the Lakeview drawings where the property lines were, but we've tried to show the right of way limits on both sides. Um, there's another cross section. Um, let me see here. Um, uh, so this one, that one's showing the same thing. And uh, where are we? Um, again, where's that one? Where's that one? Let me go into this is twenty. Okay, so here's another cross I'm just sharing again. It shows the, um, uh, there's quite a bit of a cut. This is where there was a, a lay-by proposed on Quarry Road. Uh, the road is being dropped. These are in meters. So the current elevation of the roads at 258, it's proposed to be a cut of about six feet, or two meters. So if we look at the, um, now there were different cross sections prepared in the Lakeview drawings. One had a two to one side slope, others had a three to one. Um, but if we look at the, again, the side slopes, um, where it really becomes apparent is when we drop the road by six feet, put in the granulars that were noted, and then we do our ditch at the half meter, um, ditch being half a meter below our granulars, and then we go back up at two to one, where, you know, the road width is, you see how the, how wide the road becomes, because we've got this huge cut where the property requirements are. So, once again, I don't know um, if this information was uh, was provided as part of the peer review or even if the detailed design is far enough to provide to plot cross sections all the way through this road. But um, but again, this is where the, the forced road comes into, into impact. 
And just a personal note on property I have, it's gone back to the 1880s. I own property where uh, the town of Huntsville had a road on my property. Uh, we settled for them getting it for a dollar. They wanted 33 feet um, from the center line of the road. I gave them to the Toa slope that's been there forever. So um, that's all I had to give them. I didn't have to give them any more than they had already occupied and they were I wanted to get rid of it because it represented a liability because I had a road on my property that if somebody crashed, I could be sued for. So I was happy to get rid of it, but um, I was only obligated to give them what they had occupied and no more. So um, in my case, I wanted to give it to the town, but um, you know, but in this case, because it's a forced road, there's quite a, uh, if people aren't willing to give it to you, and I know that from my MTO days, it can get into quite a paddle. So anyway, hopefully if, Anybody have any questions about those cross sections I prepared? I'm trying to illustrate how, you know, you think of a road being only, you know, 20 feet wide, but how these tapa cuts and, and toe slopes really impact on the width of the property required. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you for Thank the information. You. Helpful. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all I also have Natalie Baker, I'll unmute you now. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. I know I'm the last one today, so I will make it quick. I know that you're probably all looking to get to lunch. I'd like to begin with saying thank you to all members of council and staff for allowing the public to comment on the zoning bylaw amendment. We understand an application such as this causes stress to all members involved, but we appreciate the ability to voice our concerns with you today. I will give you fair warning, I have a little six-year-old here with me today and she comes in about every 10 minutes asking for a snack. So if you hear voices in the background, I do apologize. Mm -hmm. My husband and I have been living at 111 Quarry Road with our two young daughters for just under four years. After months of looking for a family home, we came across the property at 111 Quarry. Unlike all other properties we looked at, this property was on a quiet rural residential road with the most beautiful environmental features. I think it's important to understand that we do not oppose aggregate extraction. If you were able to come to our home, you would see that we have supported surrounding quarries with rock features around our gardens across our property. When we purchased our home, we were fully aware that there was a quarry on Ties Mountain Road that allows for the haulage of up to two trucks per day. We researched their license and at the time and understood the maximum haulage, which was something we were willing to live with. Although we do have many concerns with the proposed zoning amendment, our opposition uh, to the proposed amendment is related to the safety of the haul route, the impact to our quality of life and our property values, with the most prominent worry being the health and safety. As I mentioned, a rural residential road was an important factor when purchasing this property. Our two young children, Haley age eight and Lily age six are very active and we consistently bike on Quarry Road, traveling up to the end of Ledge Road. As a rural residential neighborhood, we are consistently using the road for biking, walking, and ATVing. Currently, we avoid the time period in the morning and afternoon when the trucks depart from that current quarry. As you can imagine, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old on a bike next to a transport truck is terrifying for any parent and certainly not worth the risk. If this zoning bylaw were approved, we would no longer be able to use the road for any type of enjoyment. Our children would be in danger to ride alongside aggregate haulage trucks one every four minutes, a risk we are, as parents are certainly not willing to take. In addition, our property is one of three bus stops on the proposed haul route with a truck every four minutes. I'm very concerned not only for the safety of our own children, but all the other children that will be getting on this bus stop. We selected the municipality of Trent Lakes to reside due to the diverse qualities an area provides residents. We wanted a small, quiet municipality where we can enjoy the outdoors and become part of a close community. I believe we've done that in the last four years. We attend community events put on by the municipality, and my husband is a volunteer firefighter at Hall 4, just two minutes down the road from our home. We absolutely love this community and what you as council continue to provide the residents who live here. That being said, the current hall route through a rural residential community does threaten this way of life. Our quality of life will be directly impacted by that proposed haul route. As the peer review for the noise study notes in their peer review, the change in sound compared to the current existing road traffic will certainly be noticeable and significant with a truck passing every four minutes. A statement 
This statement is certainly difficult to read and comprehend, a noticeable and significant increase in noise that will interrupt our quality of lives in the way we currently use our property. The exact opposite of why we purchased a home on a small residential road. The noise will also not be limited to business hours with consistent trucks well into the evening every weekday and also on the weekend. The peer review also states that in order for the noise to rain, remain below an acceptable level, the speed limit will need to be reduced to 40 kilometers an hour. As you all know, most drivers do not drive the speed limit exactly. I am myself, am guilty of that. Unless there is a constant patrol of speed limit, which is not sustainable in the future, the noise will easily increase over that sound limit and it is unlikely for drivers to consistently made to maintain a speed of 40 kilometers an hour. The last item of concern is our property value. It is safe to assume that our property value will decrease greatly. No one wants to purchase a home that sees over 140 haulage trucks per day, myself included. The property loses all aspects of its appeal. We understand that the aspect of fairness in life is often debated as it is constantly stated that life is not fair. In this situation, one individual makes a large profit, while the property owners on the proposed haul route will not have, it, not only have to endure the noise and safety concerns, but also have their homes depreciated. Today, we ask you to consider the safety of this haul route and all other factors that will affect the residents on this road. I thank you again for hearing our concerns, and we hope uh, you can see the dra dramatic impacts of this haul route through a rural residential community. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll do one last call for anyone wanting to raise their hand to make an oral submission. <clears throat> okay. uh, seeing none, I will turn off the picture. Um, the time is now 1.28. The maximum allowed time for council meeting is five hours at this time. I don't know if council wants to extend the time limit for an additional hour to be able to receive um, more input until two at a maximum, or if the remainder of the meeting can be held within the last half an hour. Uh, I, I have to leave at two o'clock. Yeah. I, I don't mind extending it to two. I would like to continue until we complete all of it if we could and i'm respectfully yeah. I, I know you have to leave <coughs> do think, give it, we had almost 80 people on the line <coughs> so i would prefer to continue without yeah. interruption so and complete it. just my personal opinion <coughs> oh so <laughs> if, if there is agreement well i'll test agreement around that by by tabling a motion um, uh, and the motion would be that we uh, temporarily suspend the rules of procedure to allow the meeting to extend for up to one hour beyond the established maximum limit of five hours. And see if there's a second to that. I second that motion. It's, we've got a lot of people that wanted to attend today, so I think it's important to hear from everyone. Oh, Call for a vote. Okay. I've got to go, but it's all right. Yeah, all in favor then? Yep. Okay, approved then. Yep. Okay. Now what I ask, Gordon. Uh, now we'll just have Adele read any public uh, submissions that were received that were not read today. Thank you. Through you, Deputy Mayor Wendover, I have an email I received from Don Smith. It says, Dear members of council, I am asking you to vote down the zoning bylaw amendment application that Dudney Mountain Farms has submitted to rezone their property to create a limestone quarry. This application affects too many people. I am opposed to this application. Thank you, Don Smith, landowner, Ties Mountain Road. The next email I received was from Catherine Mitchell. Hello, I wish to go on record as a concerned tax paying citizen in the municipality of Trent Lakes that this business with the quarry has gotten this far again. I will not stand idly by while council has a blatant disregard of zoning bylaws that are in place to protect citizens and animals alike. I will be attending the special council meeting 
Dooney Mountain Farms Limited public meeting August 10th and will be voting accordingly. Catherine Mitchell, 93 Nichols Cove Road. The next email I received was from Drew Milligan. And his, he starts his email, the microphone just stopped working on my computer. So I hope this can be read at the meeting. I am saddened that this meeting is taking place. It wasn't so very long ago that opponents of this quarry raised private money to afford a very expensive lawyer because we believe that there was a point in this expenditure. Good legal representation could prevent someone from exploiting resources in a manner that would be detrimental to the environment and to the greater community. That community, community included people in the Bob Cajun area who are not part of this municipality, but who would have been impacted by truck traffic coming from the quarry and whose love of the Kawarthas doesn't at, end at the municipal boundary. At the time, I objected that our municipal lawyer ended up arguing for the quarry as the municipal government at the time didn't mind loading the dice against its own citizens. The deputy mayor justified this when I confronted him on the matter by telling me that Dooney Mountain Farms was paying for our lawyer. By our lawyer, I mean the lawyer who was supposed to be representing the citizens of Trent Lakes, but instead contributed to a situation where Dooney Mart Dooney Farms were represented by twice what private citizens were entitled to. Neither the mayor nor the deputy mayor could understand why this was prob problematic. Despite this legal imbalance, Mr. Gillespie's arguments on environmental and safety concerns were such that our side won. We celebrated as if we lived in the kind of democracy where this decision mattered. Duty Farms will not meet the same resistance as it did before, because a lot of people have realized that money almost always wins in this kind of situation. The OMB that ruled in our favor no longer exists, but has been replaced by a process where more amenable to developers. So Duty Farms will make another application for the mega quarry to go through. It is to be hoped that a majority of councillors will do their utmost to oppose this quarry, but even if they do, the next municipal government may be a different story, and Dudney Farms will again apply. It doesn't work out. It doesn't work the other way around. When the mega quarry wins, it's forever. It seems that we have that we live in a monocracy where the man behind Dudney Farms can outweigh the rest of us when it comes to the scale of justice. Yours sincerely, Drew Mulligan. And lastly, I've got an email from Tim McClellan. We are totally against this proposal. We cannot understand the logic of putting the hall route on residential road where children live, play, and catch their school bus. Tim and Joyce McClellan. And that includes the correspondence I have received regarding well, thank this you. application. Okay. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, we continue on with the, the comment. I, I'd uh, like to note that to maybe ask, uh, are you still there, Gory? Russell? You got any, any uh, to address any of the comments that were given? Gore, are you there? I'm just getting unmuted and uh, hopefully you can see me as well. So yes, I've been listening all, to all the comments um, and we've been taking notes. Uh, by all means, uh, which question would you like me to address? No, we're just wondering whether you have any you want to address. The uh, comments that were given. Well, the first off, the, uh, the, the one comment about the uh, uh, road drawings, they have been revised. They have been vetted through your consultant, Tatum Engineering, and I can assure you that the drawings illustrate that the new road is being constructed totally within the road allowance that the municipality owns. So that's number one. Um, number two, um, the, the direction from the Ontario Municipal Board 
is to utilize the 53 decibel as the maximum limit of uh, noise emanating from the trucks passing by the, the dwellings. And that that uh, decibel uh, allowance um, is to be um, uh, verified in front of the front facades of the dwellings themselves. So that's the location of where the 53 decibel uh, allowance is to be uh, uh, confirmed and Mr. Williamson can confirm that as well. Um, Q, uh, uh, um, uh, could you please confirm the 53 decibels of, as to how it, how it is uh, evaluated and uh, from what distance to what location? Yes, you're correct, Gord, that the OMB directed that it be at the facades of the houses and uh, not at some great distance from the house. So uh, that is what uh, what we did. So I confirm that. And the uh, if there isn't an additional dwelling that has been constructed, we can certainly locate that and verify to council that it conforms to the 53 decibel allowance. Is that not? Uh, is that is that available to us, Mr. Williamson? Uh, yes, it certainly is. Yes, I, I mean, I think, you know, maybe there's one very new one we may have missed. I don't know. But uh, as far as I know, uh, we certainly in 2020, when the pub report was published, um, I believe we had all the houses that, which were relevant. Right. So if the a billing permit has been issued for a new dwelling on quarry or ledge, the billing department will have that site drawing in their billing permit application. If they were to release that information to us, we could assess that particular property uh, with your uh, review and then confirm back to the municipality. That's correct? Yes, we certainly. That's so correct. We, we can. We would ask for that, to, that information to be released if, if possible um, and verify that one concern for that individual uh, sensitive land receptor. Um, again, um, there was a lot of comments about uh, the quarry use itself. Again, um, I would like to focus that it, it is, this proposal is uh, to focus in on the issue of noise emanating from the truck uh, movements on, on the road and how best we can uh, improve the noise situation with regards to keeping the traffic um, to a maximum of 14 trucks per hour, uh, reduce the, the uh, speed limit and improve the surface of the road. Those are the three main things. This, this uh, access is the only access available to Dunia Mountain Farms to uh, provide a haul route to the site from the county road. Uh, we have no other option. Um, and based on that, we're trying to do the best we possibly can in light of the residents, in light of uh, the recommendations from the, from the peer reviewers and the direction from council. So oh, that was really addresses many of the questions that were technical in nature. Um, uh, if there's other questions, by all means, uh, or issues that you would like clarified, we can do that as well. Uh, Mr. Uh, Halkama is here. He can verify that the drawings illustrate the road allowance improvements to be entirely within the road allowance. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. The uh, new road is split the old road that right down the middle, and it, it there was a mention of a forced road. It was a forced road at one time, but it now has a, a right away a surveyed right away limit, 20 meters. And we're, we're well within that limit. Oh, okay. Inclusive of the ditches. Good. Is that correct, Mr. Alcoba? I'm Jenny. sorry? Inclusive of all the ditches? Inclusive of the ditches, yes. Is there any council members who want anything to clarify? Here? No. No, anyone else? Here? Go ahead. I'd like to make a comment. Yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. Closure. Um, 
I would just like to thank everybody that came forward to speak. I was extremely impressed with the homework that most people have done. So uh, virtually all of the people that spoke were speaking from an informed perspective uh, and had educated themselves in advance. Um, so very much appreciate the fact that you, you took the time to do that and it adds credibility to your comments. Um, I thank Gord and your consultants, although you're being paid for this, which is different from the people who are, who are delegating, but I do thank you for um, um, coming forward as well and you know, providing us with, with your expertise and, and your comments and clarifications. So uh, again, especially to those uh, members of the public who came forward, thank you for um, making your informed comments. Um, I think you did a, a terrific job expressing your, your views and the rationale for your views. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's the geotechnical assessment. How do you know how wide the roads go if you don't know what's underneath it? I'll defer that to Mr. Halpa. So we got a, did a few test holes. Most of the road underneath there is, uh, is solid rock. And that's what we're going to find. Normally, you would do a, a test drilling with an auger and figure out where the gravel is, the dirt, mud, whatever, you know, Mother Nature put there. We did a few digs, and we couldn't get down more than a foot in some spots. Like the, the gravels are right on top of the rock. Now, we anticipate we'll have to chip out rock. That's part of the construction process. Just to clarify too, with some of the work we'll have to do on quarry will require half laning. So we'll, when we pulverize the road, we do one half. We have to come back to, do the, to maintain the road open to the public. Thank you. Okay, it's have no one else any comment. Okay. Uh, so then I would like to uh, ask any of the planning consultants or Brian, if you got any, want any closing remarks? I'll certainly defer to your planning consultant, Mr. Zeman. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor. And through uh, you, Mr. Chair, again, I would just like to, again, thank the applicants consulting team for coming forward. Uh, with information today, as well as uh, Councillor Armstrong, um, Armstrong expressed, I'd also like to thank the members of the public for uh, participating today, and all the comments that have been provided today will be taken into consideration as part of our final review, and we will have some additional follow-up with the applicant to continue to uh, work through through some of those comments. But again, I want to thank everyone for taking the time today to uh, provide the information forward. Thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Helpman okay. has something. Mr. Helpman has his hand up. Pardon? Mr. Helpman has his hand up. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Just one comment. Uh, I really appreciate how the township staff put this presentation together. It made it very easy and workable for us. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Hmm? Okay. Oh, go ahead. You, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, Brian, I wonder, you alluded to it. I wonder if you could just outline kind of next steps uh, after this. I think you did in your opening remarks, but if you could perhaps reiterate where we go from here, I think that might be helpful and reassuring to everybody on the line. Uh, yes. Um, and through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, thank you, Councillor Armstrong. In, in terms of next steps, uh, there was a lot of information that has been pr uh, provided today. So um, I understand that the municipality is preparing minutes from today's meeting, and I've been taking careful notes also. Um, I will be working uh, with the applicant's consultant uh, through Mr. Gord Russell on just the clarification. I did get some of the clarification points uh, today through the presentation. Um, one of the things that will need to be undertaken is just a confirmation um, through with Mr. Williamson in terms of any additional residential receptors that have been built along the hall route to ensure that they have been considered as part of that. Um, also, we'll have some interest in terms of 
uh, confirmation in terms of some of the other items, such as I know we did have information provided, but just confirmation that all the work is within the right of way. And there's other few other questions that I have to. So I anticipate that dialogue will be, um, you know, commencing and sort of immediately following this meeting. And then it would be sort of dependent upon the timing to get some of the information back and confirmation from the applicant. And then once we do have all the final information before, um, I will be preparing a final recommendation report to council. I do not have an exact date at this point in terms of just the timing to work with the applicant and also knowing of the upcoming municipal election. Uh, but I do know, I do understand that anyone that did attend today um, would get notice of that uh, further council meeting when this is coming forward for consideration. Is that helpful, Councillor Armstrong? Yes, that was exactly what I was looking for. Thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Well, I guess now we will reconvene our regular council meeting. We have a motion? Jerry, yes. Okay. Yeah. Second that button. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Gary. Okay. Okay, and confirming bylaws and the motion. Confirming by okay, Peter, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Second, Second the motion Carol. to okay. confirm the bylaw. All in favor? Okay, approved. Good. And now we get them over to adjourn. Okay, Terry. And Peter, okay, good. And we're out of here. Favor. All in favor? Oh. All in favor? All in favor? Oh. Yeah. Tell you how we did that. Okay. Good. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Mr.